You are now entering the world of Musings of a Geek Podcast Network. Stay geeky, my friends. Congratulations! Hi, my name is Mark, and your side quest is over! That's right, your mission has been completed. You found this podcast. Whether you rolled that D20 or you did that whole up, up, down, down, left, right, left, right, like start, whatever combination Konami code that was. I can't remember. I'm old. Leave me alone. Anyway, you're probably listening to this on a mobile device. iOS, Android, <laughs> Windows. <laughs> but did you also know that you can find this show along with so many others like it? Although admittedly, there are no shows quite like this one. Believe me, I know. I've looked. But you can always find the latest episode of this show at Tangibound Network. Go to tangiboundnetwork.com, look it up, check it out, listen from the site. It's even mobile friendly. How awesome is that? Go check it out, tangiboundnetwork.com. Episode number 89. I'm Jason. I am Jeff. And I'm Blake. And welcome. We are a live, well, a new recorded episode, I should say. No, yes. no best of this week. But I hope everyone enjoyed the best of last week because it was a good episode. Okay. Did you like the ones that, you know, we picked? Of course I did. Okay. Okay. Blake's first appearance was on it. Blake's first awesome. appearance. <laughs> we got a couple good reviews on Twitter about you. Excellent. They asked what the hell happened to you in those 80 episodes since then, 70 episodes since then. You've become jaded. I've become beat down. <laughs> by us. Beat down by the man. So, yes, we are live and uh, back. So, uh, anything going on? Any, anything? Uh, I just got back from a whitewater rafting trip. In West Virginia? In West Virginia. Dun, 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 dun. On the nice Gully River. How'd you do? Did well. You survived, obviously. I survived because I'm back. How many How many times have you gone? What is this, uh, fourth this or is fifth? about fifth or... I think the fifth time on the gully, I think once on the new. Okay. So you've been going multiple times? Um, as in more than once? Yes. Yes. <laughs> to the same place? Yes. Have you same ever, river? Yes. Oh. Have you hit your head on the same rock every time? No. Pillow rock? It's not a soft pillow. Yeah, it doesn't I, I, feel like I, it. I still. I should have asked. Why the hell is it called pillow? I think it's because the the white water looks fluffy like a pillow at that particular spot. But I would advise you not to do that. Yeah, <laughs> but no, we we went through Pillow Rock without a problem this time. So. Good. So. Did you actually paddle, or you just sit in the boat? Paddle. <laughs> he smoked there, a cigar. Are there paddle. people that just sit in the raft? And not if they're on my trip. No, no, everybody paddles. Uh, there are some people that may. Apparently, really? people I were with were complaining that someone came along with them last year who uh, decided she just wanted to GoPro the whole trip or whatever oh. down the river. And I would have thrown that GoPro camera into the river and just <laughs> see ya. Have a good day. And probably with the person too. It's like damn media. Uh. Have you ever been whitewater rafting, Blake? No. It's really fun. I've been whitewater canoeing. Not saying. No, no, okay. no. Especially if your you're whitewater canoeing is the Whitewater River in <laughs> yes, Indiana and Ohio, because uh, I don't think you see a single bit of white water in that river. You knew there was a little lip at one point. <laughs> it gets a little foamy. It's a class point five. So <laughs> yeah, that's right. a little foamy. 
You would, I think, enjoy here. whitewater so, rafting. I enjoy it, except for the camping. I think it'd be pretty good. I, yeah, I, I'd camping. like it. Yeah. I agree. The camping's not fun. Yeah, if they had, like, uh, you know, five-star hotels at every break, then maybe I would do it. They do have a hotel close. Yeah. that I have no issue staying there. Oh, but then I got that? ripped on last time. Oh, you can't stay at the hotel. You gotta camp. Oh. Fuck that. Oh, the one time when My we kid, were... Man. One time years ago, we were... While we were rafting, a big storm came through and destroyed our tent and the camp or whatnot, so... That night we like got back to the camp, threw the tent away, and went to the hotel, and that was the best not rafting part of a trip I've had. There was the fact that I could sleep in a bed. When mm. when Nichols said he bought a from uh, Gravinama said he bought a cabin with no running electricity or water or indoor plumbing, that's an issue for me. Any of those is well, an yeah, issue it's for me because you're a proper diva. I am. I am. <laughs> yes, you are. <laughs> you were about to argue that, weren't you? Yes, yes, I was. <laughs> okay, fuck you, three six five. Uh, no, so when you go to, you have to actually use an outhouse. Yeah, in but a he... Sears, old Sears catalog <laughs> for toilet paper. Well, Nickel did say that they are updating everything. They renovated it for plumbing and all that. stuff. I would be scared if I were in the outhouse that I would like hold the door shut. Yeah. Because I'm afraid that some cowboy would open it up and shoot me while I was on the shitter. You know, oh. you're probably allowed to put a little latch on there, so... You know, those latches can be broke. you got to hold the door. Deadbolt. <laughs> Deadbolt. Yeah, you got to put one well, foot up on the wall, <laughs> and you got to hold on to that handle, and you put the other foot on the floor, and then you got to do your stuff as fast as possible because you don't want to get shot while you're on the shitter. That's a weird shitting position. <laughs> it works. <laughs> okay. <laughs> Believe it or not, having the one foot elevated helps with the uh, flow of things. The gravity. The gravity of it. Okay. Well, I actually had read an article somewhere that, you know, sitting down like normal, like Mm -hmm. most humans do on a toilet, is not the natural way we should be. Shark Tank. Love that show. There's a mom and son that that built this thing that you put underneath, put against the toilet, and you you kneel up a little bit higher. You prop your feet up higher? Yes. And it's the actual pooping position. And they sell it at Bed Bath and Beyond now, and it's made millions because it's actually it's been scientifically tested really? that that's the best way. Yeah. Now, do they come with like a uh, magazine slash uh, magazine iPad rack? rack? No, they do not. That's compatible with that. No, but the no. the groove hooks or co- uh, curves around the toilet base, yeah. so it just moves in really nicely. Really. So, there you go, Bed Bath and Beyond. You should go do it. I so. see. Uh, speaking of exciting things, Jeff. Okay. We are the softball champions of our league. <laughs> well, tournament champions. Tournament champs. Tournament champs. Tournament champs. We were 3 and 11. <laughs> uh, we went into the tournament and. Uh, Correct. In the fourth inning? Fourth inning, top of the fourth. We were down 7 to 3, I think, or 7 to 2. Something like that. We were not looking too sharp. And uh, top of the fourth, lightning and rain came. And we weighed it and weighed it. And then we went up to the bar area because they have a nice covered bar area at the softball field that we play at. Very nice, yes. I like it. And uh, the guy that runs the league came up to me and said, uh, the other team can't play next week because we're obviously not playing now because it's just sitting over us, the rain. Well, the rain's sitting over us and the fields became giant puddles. Yes. Yeah, don't be jealous, California. Yeah, we got water. (laughs) That's right. Uh, They got theater majors. Uh, So... (laughs) <laughs> anyway, so the man, the guys came up to me and said, the other team can't play next week. And uh, so if that's okay with you, since they can't play next week, how about you and the other team that won just become co-winners and you'll split it? And I and he's like, and you get free shirts. And you get winning shirts. And I said, shirts, we're done. We're in. <laughs> yeah, we sure we'll good. do it. <laughs> that's all I need. So we t-shirt. won. To quote Homer Simpson, we won by the best two words in the Eng- English language. Default. That's right. <laughs> so Blake got his tonight because you weren't there. That's correct. It was an exciting <laughs> time. I wasn't even there and I'm a co-champion. Yeah. <laughs> that's awesome. Uh, and uh, there was a lot of beer bats going on. Uh, lots of beer bats. Uh, yeah. Uh-huh. I think Jeff's going to kill me. Oh, no, no. It'll be Jeff's worse. Jeff's brother It'll sprayed me with death. beer. It was a rough night. Uh, then Jeff got sprayed with beer by somebody. It was, it was, a, it was that's a, what you hope you don't get pulled over by the cops when you well, drive at home. Yes. <laughs> no, no, it was. Pulled down that window. It's like, all right, can you step out of the car, It was Jason threw a half a cup, and these are big cups. Yeah. Uh, a half a tub of beer on me, and then ran away to his car and drove away. I like did. A I bit. did. <laughs> it's probably the best thing to do. I did. Yeah. You know, there's retaliation. Coming. Yes. 
Oh, it's coming. I know. It's still coming. But I was the, I was not the first one to throw beer. There was a lot of beer going on. Uh, it was a very celebratory thing. It was like we won the World Series. It was exciting was awesome. times. That's great. So uh, we've gotten to the age that uh, we don't really care about championships. We just want the shirts. We want the proof that we accomplished something. I just want a shirt. Right. I don't care what it says on it. Yeah. Although uh, I think we were told that if, uh, oh, who was it, the uh, the football player, uh, Pittsburgh defender, uh, Dick LeBeau? No. Uh, Pamalu? That one no. guy. Uh, the one who was on the Bengals like Josh two years Har- ago. Josh Harrison? Yeah, Josh Harrison. James Harrison. James, James Harrison. Harrison. <laughs> yes, James Harrison. His brother Josh is a big Josh, man. Yeah. He's a well, big yeah. softball James player. Harrison <laughs> said he won't let his children accept trophies if they didn't win something. That's right, participation trophies. He's he not my, made them give them back. Yeah. He's not my dad. I'm keeping that shirt, <laughs> motherfucker. I'm running with that shirt. <laughs> I've worn it four times Although already. it says champion, not participant. So That's right. That's true. So that was exciting things. We uh, earned it by showing up. Blake, did you have any stories? Uh, I finished Wayward Pines. And? With uh, Kevin Dillon's brother. And? Uh, Michelle I think, and I were pretty upset. Uh, yeah, really? I remember Blake uh, yes. uh, putting something on Facebook with a couple of nasty four-letter words. Yes, yes. yes. Yeah. The ending was not for everybody. It sucked. <laughs> okay. <laughs> I, I, you know, I, 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 do you plan to watch this? I plan at chance? some point in time. You you plan at some you point. You can in spoil time. it because it's been years. <laughs> Put your fingers, earmuffs, earmuffs. Okay, good. He's got his earmuffs. Yes. On. All I gotta say is it, it started out with a lot of promise. It had the unreliable narr- mm-hmm. narrator, which I love an awful lot. And then it went from like a kind of goofy detective to sci-fi to what the fuck is going Excuse on with me. this show? Because the twist is that it's centuries in the future. It's stupid. I hate I like it. that and, twist. And, and, and it's all run by a crazy guy, and the secret is supposed to be kept by all these teenagers. All the parents are left in the whatever, and you're just... It, how in the hell did mankind evolve into that kind of stupid shit? And if you saw it coming, how come you couldn't put a stop to it? Because it was, it, was, it was just genes. And then, and then you talk about reviving people, and there's a whole bunch of people that still need to be re- revived, you know, you know, revived. But then he's got all these people that are his volunteers that are working for him and all that. It doesn't make sense. The plot just had so many holes in it. And I can suspend belief to a point to where it's ridiculously stupid. And then after that, I'm like, I can't believe I wasted ten hours of my life watching this show. I like the first eight episodes. I like the first... Four. I like for, I like the twist. I love the twist. Yeah. Um, and then then the very ending was stupid. I hated that stupid ending. Like, oh yeah, well here you go. And it, yeah, but it just shows that they keep trying and trying and trying to re- make the perfect what's society. The point. Well, I don't know. There is no point. It was M Night Shyamalan. There is no <laughs> point to doing what they did to try and keep everybody in the dark about everything. It's so stupid. You can come back, Jeff. You done? Yeah, you're going oh, okay. back. <laughs> I heard no teenagers worries. ridiculously stupid, and there was no point. But that's all I was able to make it out. Was awesome. <laughs> Except for then, it was okay. The last yeah. episode or two was eh, kind of. But I enjoyed it. I really did. I really liked it. Blake's giving me an evil look. Ah, uh, yes. Evil uh, look. Okay, moving on. That's what an evil look sounds like on podcasting. Mm. Uh, so, can we talk real quick about the NFL opening week? Oh, yes, please. Well, we can, but I really didn't see much because I was oh. camping. Did you watch the Bengals game? We did catch the Bengals game, so that was excellent. All you got to do is check on your fantasy football scores, and you're good. Yeah, no, that sucks. 3-0, <laughs> and baby, this week. I'm 0-3 in my three leagues. 3-0. and uh, The Raiders fans look like they had so much hope, and then... And then they blew the starting whistle? Yeah, and then you just saw their faces drop throughout the game like, what the fuck is going on? I seriously thought they looked like the Bengals fans from the 1990s. And for you uh, non-football fans, the 1990s, uh, the Bengals were the worst team in the NFL, record-wise. And it was a bad, bad decade. Uh, We call it the lost decade around here. Uh, One of our quarterbacks who's right-handed threw it left-handed, and the Cleveland Browns returned it for a touchdown right before half. And wasn't (laughs) it, wasn't, weren't 
the Bengals on their close to their goal line in their yes. red zone? Yes. Yeah. It was All a, they had to do was take a sack and kick a field goal and be happy. Yeah. yeah. No, it was, a, it was a red zone pass where the right-hander mm-hmm. threw it left-handed and it was returned for a touchdown. Yes. Gus Barat. Thank you. That was great. <laughs> Did he, he like, like give himself a concussion yeah, by running same into one, the wall? <laughs> head banged into the yeah. uh, he get, he head butted the wall and gave himself mm-hmm. a concussion with the Redskins. Yes. Uh, we were so bad in the 1990s, the Bengals were, that even Elvis Gerbach wouldn't come to our team. <laughs> That's how bad it was. I'm but, going to stay retired. But we did have Dumble Neil O'Donnell. Neil O'Donnell, the king of the two-yard passes. Hey, swing pass. Yeah. Second, It's fourth and nine. We're going for it. Uh, that's a two-yard pass. Yeah, okay. Like, oh, look, he made it to the uh, Super Bowl with Pittsburgh. Yeah, the Neil worst, O'Donnell the worst must be Pittsburgh great. Steeler quarterback in Super Bowl history. Yes. And, and uh, everyone gave, was it Larry Brown, all that credit for those two interceptions. And it's like, Neil O'Donnell threw it to nobody. Larry Brown was out of position. He was out of position twice. I mean, I, th- I think he was just trying to dump it and not expecting anyone to be there. Because they shouldn't have been there. <laughs> I think Neil O'Donnell was the only quarterback going into the Super Bowl that the news reports were he was already signing with another team. <laughs> And they, like, denied everything, and then after the Super Bowl, he signed with the Jets. Oh, that's right. You remember that. I do remember that. Take that, Jets. Yeah. Uh, Yeah, New York. The Browns look like they were in mid-season four? No, they look like... (laughs) Mid-season, yeah. They they look like exactly like the ten other past uh, season opener games that they lost. (laughs) You know, and I'm not mocking, uh, Johnny Manziel actually looked decent, and Uh, then he had his first turnover, and it was all downhill after that. Yeah, not we, bad for a guy who hadn't taken a snap for like two or three weeks. You know what? I, I, and no, it was pretty bad. He didn't even know he was being brought. And there was the one uh, took the sack, and I think it was a fumble where uh, the uh, you know the, the defense the, the defense is rushing <laughs> guy yeah, the on defense, the other team the defense is rushing in his offensive lineman you know. Pushed the guy so far away that there was no chance he had of even touching Manziel until Manziel ran right into him. Well, and that was the bulk of our rushing attack, too, with uh, Isaiah Crowell. Hey, look at this gap here. No, I'll run into the pile. <laughs> you know, you probably could sign Trent Richardson. Why not? You should. That would be funny. You Better get. Them than me. Oh, sorry. sorry. Yeah, exactly. <laughs> Turn my phone off there. <laughs> it was very apt. It was. That was my Simpsons game. Sorry about that, guys. Um. You looking for your? I'm looking for the Millennium okay. Falcon. Anyways, uh, and I don't. You know what? I hate Manziel, but after he actually took rehab somewhat seriously, I don't fault the guy now. Um, I would. I would like to see him succeed, just because it'd be a nice feel-good story. The Browns are my yeah. second favorite uh, an AFC North team. <laughs> so <Thank you>. yeah, <laughs> really? Yeah, I hate the Ravens. I hate the Steelers. You used to like the Ravens. Yeah, and then the Bengals got competitive. Uh, <laughs> and so I remember you had a Ravens ball cap. I used to and, like the Ravens, but then yeah. So I like the whole uh, Edgar Allan Poe thing, but other than that, screw them. Yeah, I like Ted Marchabroda, their one coach. He was nice. Um, yeah, uh, we are on nerdly.co.uk. We are. Uh, we're on Geek Life Radio every Friday at 10 a.m. Eastern, 9 a.m. Central. And most of the time, it's updated. It is. We've only, I think we, you've only missed, what, two? Twice, I think, yeah. yeah. That's pretty impressive. Better than Graphic Novice. Uh, much better than those slackers. Uh, we're on Tangent Bound Network, Wicket Radio, and Musings, and, oh, DangerEntertainment.net. Do you? DangerEntertainment.net. <laughs> Get down with yourself, Michael Leah. Oh, yeah. Get down. Oh, oh. I have stop. no clue what he's doing. <laughs> <laughs> oh, yeah. Get your fucking chicken on. Yeah. Yeah. So, anyway, that's Did where you, you can find us. Before we started this podcast. <laughs> I was actually motivated to be, like, really excited about today. Yes, yeah, okay. We haven't talked in, like, two weeks. <laughs> Maybe that was by design. Maybe. Yeah. <laughs> Those are the places you can find us, and along with us, other great podcasts. That you can stick in your ears. Yeah. Uh, and also, we do have a contest. In other places. $25 gift card um, to iTunes. If you write a review and just let us know by email at the history uh, of bad ideas at yeah. gmail.com. I got yeah, you, Jeff. That's the one you got me. Or uh, you can tweet it to us at Bad Ideas Podcast. Or on Facebook at the History of Bad Ideas. Just let us know that you uh, did a review for us. We need a couple more reviews for the gift card to be drawn. So, yeah, so yeah. send it in, guys. And uh, there you go. I think we got listener feedback. Feedback? We'll go on to listener feedback. Do we got anything else? Uh, Anybody buy Star Wars toys? No. You did. I did. Yeah. Anyone else? No. What'd you buy? 
couple figures. I uh, got Kylo Ren. Uh, Who the hell is that? He's the new bad guy. He's the guy with the cross, the cross sword uh, lightsaber there. Oh, you got the lightsaber with the side exhausts. Yes, yes, yes. which are completely pointless. No, no, you got except except for you know no. cutting your own finger off. Or it keeps something. the lightsaber running. They're smoothly. incredibly pointful. This cutting debate wrist, is this debate wrist. is on YouTube. You can find it, and they'll tell you why it actually works. Why? I don't know. You don't watch it. <laughs> <laughs> I mean, you think about it. You uh, lightsabers are dangerous weapons. Now, last, last thing you need is like these exhausts things coming out horizontally to poke yourself or cut your own wrist off. Well, you, if you're like good with the weapon, you won't do that. Hopefully. I got Captain Phantasm, which is the dumbest name ever for a Captain character. Phantasm. It's, I thought it was Phasm. Yeah, it wasn't Phantasm. Nah, Phantasm's Phasma. Movie. <laughs> Phasma. It was Phasma. Yeah, I still like it. But, um, it's, but she's played by Brienne of Tarth. Yes, from Lord of the Brit, uh, the, the Game of Thrones. Yes, thank you. Um, she's in the Star Wars movie. Yeah, she's the uh, head of the stormtroopers. Really? Yeah. She's got a silvery suit, a chrome suit yeah. or something. Well, that something. doesn't make sense because you know that's exactly what you want to do when you're going into battle is to catch everyone's attention. No, hey, I'm the commander. The I'm over one. here. I got that's the right. flamethrower stormtrooper. Uh, and I think I got another one coming. I think I got the girl. Uh, the P- fit. Daisy po. Ridley. Poe. Nope, not Poe. Oh, yeah, Poe is Poe Dameron is not Daisy Ridley's no, character. Uh, whosoever she plays, I forget. So, and then we're going to get some more. So I'm exci- excited. You, you didn't get the uh, Uncle uh, Owen. Uh, the the charred Owen. remains of Uncle <laughs> Owen. <laughs> Owen. Uh, the the Millennium Falcon uh, that hover. No, uh, no. My wife put a kibosh on some of the pricing. <laughs> I think you could have gotten it for like eighty nine dollars. I could have. I could have. Uh, divorce is a lot more expensive. Uh, so. <laughs> well, that's true. Oh, yeah. but, but that's one that I can actually do something. Your yeah. action figures are going to sit in a box. No, I gave them to my son. Oh, you actually opened them. Uh, the only one I'm keeping is Kylo Ren because I like the character. He's pretty cool. I got an extra one of that. Uh, Nick, best color man in the business, got me a couple. So uh, awesome. So go ahead, Blake. Start us off. All right, let's go with uh, some listener feedback from Doug. Can't buy yourself a nickname. You can't buy yourself a nickname. <laughs> you can't buy yourself. yourself you know, anything. honestly, if you give me enough money, I'll give you the nickname you want. I so mean, you can buy it. We should have done that with Babs. Damn it, we just oh. gave her one. Bribe <laughs> yourself a nickname too. Speak up, Babs. Do we have a Republican convention tonight, or a party, or a de- debate tonight? Is that tonight? Uh, or is there tomorrow? Who the hell's paying attention? I didn't to that even realize it was even this. I'm very week, upset. Rich, Rick Perry dropped out. Yeah. Sure. Of the debate or of the entire race? The entire race. Oh, okay. Oh, <laughs> uh, he dropped out of Journey. Yes, yes. <laughs> oh, no, that's okay. Steve Perry. And I can't oh, Steve stop Perry. this feeling anymore. No, that's Ario Speed. Oh, <laughs> my lord. I'm surprised you even recognize what song that was. <laughs> I'm like, what Journey song is that? <laughs> <laughs> okay, moving on. Go ahead, Blake. What's from Doug? You are a registered voter. Just let everybody know. <laughs> The future sure of your country is in his hands. We're not voting for yes. bans. Uh-huh. Yes, everyone. His vote counts exactly the same as yours. <laughs> one for one. Go Rick Perry. <laughs> no, wait. Actually, I take that back. We're in Ohio. Our votes count more. Yes, we're more yes. important. <laughs> At least for Ohio, New York, Florida. And then Ohio. Yeah. Now, New York's voting Democrat. It doesn't matter. Oh, yeah, that's true. They don't count. They don't count. It's, it's Ohio and Florida are the only votes. I mean, yeah, they shouldn't true. even we're, bother. We're Maybe Wisconsin. Con- Can but- we not matter? Because I really don't want any more candidates coming through our area. It fucks up the traffic every year. Yeah, just that's don't true. be named Chad. All right. <laughs> so. Hanging Chad. I get it. Ah. That's right. All right, so anyways, back from uh, number one. (laughs) Fan Doug. There you go. Were you at the Disney store at 6 a.m. for Force Friday, the unveiling of the new Star Wars merchandise? Uh, We just talked about this. No, I was not. Um, I had my uh, computer. uh, At midnight. Yes, I was on my computer at 1130. When was Force Friday? Did I miss it? The Friday before Labor Day, wasn't it? Yeah. Yes. So it was like last That's when all the toys... The last Friday in August? That sounds about right. Yeah. It, was, it was the night that we defaultedly won our uh, softball championship. Yes. Yeah. Oh, okay. Uh, it went on Thursday night, Friday morning, 12.01 a.m. I uh, did not stand in line. At 11.30, I got my computer. I was laying in bed, and I was like, oh, at midnight, I just start buying this stuff so I don't have to mm. wait in line. And then I fell asleep. 
And I woke up at 4.57 a.m. And everything was sold out. No, not everything. But then I started clicking stuff to put in the cart. And my eyes were so, like, glazed over like you are. Like, when you just wake up, I'm like... I don't know what I'm buying, and I think it's expensive. I'll just wait till the morning. <laughs> so I closed it, and then I bought some stuff at 9 in the morning. But, yeah, it could have been dangerous. Well, I could have bought a Millennium nice. Falcon. What's nice is, though, you could have blamed it on your uh, daughter. I could have. Yeah, like you did in the past. Like hey, you, you know what? She past. did that. <laughs> yes. I'm going, to get, it's going to get expensive video games here soon. That's right. The new wrestling game you know, comes she out. She supposedly ordered your Sony PlayStation video game. Star Wars coming out. In theory. November. Yeah, excited. Yay. Very good alibi. Okay. Next, right. so we got uh, Randall Holt at RJ Holt six six six. You know what? Maybe he is evil. I'm not sure. Maybe he is handled to be evil on purpose. Yeah, but anyways, he says you gotta capital letters get your pick with the original and best Batman. Do it, Adam West and Burt Ward. So cool. Hashtag holy great value Batman. Comic Expos this weekend. And, this uh, coming weekend? Yes, in Cincinnati. I'll be there. And, um, you yeah, trouble with your peasant? No, not at all. <laughs> and you'll um, be square. And, uh, uh-huh. $100 gets to get pictures with Adam West and Burt Ward together. And, uh, I think I might do it. Really? In Cincinnati this weekend? Yeah. Yeah. I did not know that. And, um, Friday, Saturday, Sunday. Uh, the issue is that it's $100. I, uh, the other. The, For one day? No, 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 to get a picture taken with those two. Oh, okay, okay. An autograph, I think. Picture and autograph with yeah, and my issue, Adam and Burt. I hate spending money on that, and I'm really not a big fan of autographs, but it's those two. And they said this is probably one of his last conventions that he's ever doing. Because he's 87. I mean, at this point, it's like, why the fuck am I still well, doing this? He's got a good hair dye job. It's real. It's natural. Yeah. Trump's his uh, hairstyle. But he looks real good on uh, Family Guy. Yes, he does. He's the mayor. Yeah. Mm-hmm. So I think I'm going to do it though. My wife talked me into it. My brother talked me into it. So I think I'm going to do it. Oh, if your wife said yes, then there's nothing to even I consider. Know, but it's uh, so I, I have know. nothing to hold you back. It's well, li- listener Ray said you have to do. I it. I know. So now I have to do it because good old Randy, Randy Holt. There you go. No Bobby H, but Randy H. <laughs> Randy H. Six six six. That's right. Next. Uh, next from Jim. Will the remake of Roadhouse with Ronda Rousey be good? Yeah, I sent you this uh, news mm-hmm. leak, didn't I? That's why I did not put the article in the news of the geek because somebody actually sent it in to us. Yeah. It, it all depends on you know if you consider the original Roadhouse good because <laughs> I can. Mm. Yeah, no. So I mean, it can't be worse than the original. So I say, yeah, it'll be good as long as they do the Family Guy version with every time Rhonda <laughs> kicks somebody, she has to say Roadhouse. Roadhouse. <laughs> <laughs> Roadhouse. <pretty cool. laughs> I'm about to say, uh, I'd rather watch uh, an hour and a half of Ronda Rousey than an hour and a half of Patrick Stewart and uh, or Patrick Stewart. Patrick <laughs> Stewart. <laughs> I love Patrick Stewart yeah. in Roadhouse. Patrick, Patrick Stewart, Stewart yeah. in Roadhouse. There you go. That's Patrick, pretty funny. Patrick Swayze's mullet, uh, then yes, it will be good. <laughs> Roadhouse. I can't be bad. The first one was not good, people. <laughs> Yeah. As I long mean, as you set your expectations, you know. I don't, maybe if you saw low. first saw it when you were eight, you might have thought it was fun. But no, it's a terrible movie. It's a movie every only, way, shape, or form. It's a movie only going to be thirty nine seconds. That's your longest fight, isn't it? Pretty close. No. Yeah. Two minutes. Oh, sorry. Two minutes. Forty her seconds. Longest. What's that? Forty seconds. That might be yeah. the average of her fights, but it's not the longest. They should have remade the movie Eight Seconds from Luke Perry with Ronda Rousey. Oh, that would be See? cool. Like, yeah. She beats up a bull. I'm not riding that thing. <laughs> Boom. She punches it down. And then puts I win. And then clock. sits on it. <laughs> then sits on it for eight seconds. Yes. Uh, you know, if there's a mechanical bull in Roadhouse and they have Ronda Rousey ride it in slow, sexy action... Mm, I'm sorry, I stopped one. listening when you said Ronda Rousey riding it. Yeah. yeah. <laughs> bound, chicky, bound, bound. That's right. And there's your 40-second average. Mm. <laughs> and I'm spent. <laughs> and out. Oh, she is quite attractive. Okay. Yeah, she's all right. All right, so uh, from the Pulp Culture Cafe at TPC Cafe, Hugh Jackman said he would be interested in playing Bond, James Bond. Opinions. Anyone? I would have to get used to it. Every generation's got their bond, right? Yep. Mine's Roger Moore. You eventually get used to the other bonds. <laughs> Mine's by Timothy default. Dalton. <laughs> but they, when they usually pick 
actors like well you know Sean Connery was Sean Connery Roger Moore had like kind of like a B TV series with the Saint right B? back oh, in the day oh come on yeah and then you had that Shakespeare dude with a cleft chin or whatever what's his name Roger Daltrey no that's from the George Lazerby no not Lazerby he was only Timothy from one Dalton? Timothy Dalton yeah that's, <laughs> that it. that's what I was thinking <laughs> Prince Baron from uh, Flash Gordon. Yeah. Flash! Or the, uh, oh. whatever... Pierce Brosnan. Oh, well, Pierce oh, Brosnan. Oh, no, that was the worst. Oh, I well, thought Pierce, Pierce Brosnan, Brosnan was, was good. Right. The movies were bad. Okay, I'll give you that. Yeah. You know, he, he had his Remington Steel thing, mm-hmm. but it was only a TV show, so that's still okay. Now, what's his name is doing it now? Daniel Craig. Daniel Craig. Kind of obscure dude. Kind of. B-movie guy. And then he, he, he stepped into it. You get used to the bonds, I guess. Mm-hmm. You get used it's to what them. I'm saying. You get used to the bonds. But the problem with Hugh Jackman is he's too iconic as another character in movies. Does he have claws? That would be kind of fun. That would make yeah. Bond even cooler. Shoot, he's like a Michigan <laughs> football player or something in college. I, I don't know. He's Canadian. <laughs> Canadian British. Yeah. Um, they keep saying that Tom Hardy is the odds on favorite to replace. Uh, Daniel Craig. Yeah, I don't think I like Tom Hardy. No, Is Bruce. It? Oh, Tom Hardy? <laughs> yeah. I'd rather Batman? see... Oh, yeah. I expect you to die, <laughs> Mr. Wayne. <laughs> I think I'd rather see Hugh Jackman than Tom Hardy. Mm. Tom, uh, Hugh Jackman sings and dances. He does. It could be a musical one. It's like Paint Your Wagon. Oh, that would be a musical Come on bond. And paint Your Wagon. <laughs> <laughs> it worked for Clint Eastwood. <laughs> no, it didn't work for Clint and Eastwood. And Marv... Albert... Levy? What's oh, that guy's Lee name? Marvin? Lee Marvin? Yeah, Lee Marvin. <laughs> Marv Levy. <laughs> no, Lee Marvin. Whatever. <laughs> Neither of them have Super Bowls, do they? <laughs> Good no, point. They That's Good true. point. <laughs> That's what they got in common. All right, from uh, Nickel, a graphic novice, I'd like to nominate The Dilemma as a movie Kevin James is palatable in. Palatable? As in, it's better than Paul Blart. <laughs> this is the bar that we have reached now with Kevin James. <laughs> is it better than Paul Blart? <laughs> and does Pixels cross that bar? <laughs> what about Zookeeper? What do you think about that one? Uh, okay, people. I haven't seen any of these because the trailers are bad enough. I'm, I'm throwing this out there. 365, you guys always t- uh, you know, do these t- you know, movie Good reviews. Point. Fuck this now. I want you to review Zookeeper. I, I want you to re- zookeeper and, and compare it with Paul Blart. There you go. That's, that's the challenge. Your, that's the challenge. Drop the mic. That's right. Bitches. Compare, compare and contrast. Bitches. Uh, <laughs> on a side note, Nickel did say that he is sending me a box, and it should be here tomorrow. And I'm kind of scared what's in it. I think puppies, but I'm not sure what else. Dead no, puppies? See, I oh, would they be, would be dead. I wouldn't be too worried point. because this is international mail. Mm-hmm. So if it's something seriously bad, you'll, they'll, they would probably find it. Oh, yeah, it nothing ever crosses our border. Ah, uh, that's bad. Okay, so that's good. Okay. Um, I mean, we built a wall uh, to stop Canadians from getting No damn angry. Canadians. Build the wall. <laughs> Maybe it's moose poop. Or a moose. Maybe <laughs> baby moose. And he said one thing is for the studio. And it's definitely one thing is for me. One thing is Maybe for he's me. giving us drapes so we can close them and not look at that Dr. Number good. One. <laughs> With the Canadian flag. <laughs> yeah. Whatever it is, we're putting it in the studio. <laughs> we have maybe many it, things. Maybe it's a box of cheap health insurance. Oh. <laughs> <laughs> I could use that right now. Oh, my bills are coming in. Ugh. Start selling your comic books? I haven't yet. Ah. But it's coming. Um... Well, uh, we do have a wall of shame of uh, in our studio. We have Green Lantern, the movie Pompeii, Pompeii Bats, Bats. We have Bats. I did. That's a new addition. Yeah, Superman Returns, Vertical Limit. Um, we have uh, no soliciting. Some wallpaper from uh, the best color man in business. Uh, you know, oh, his yeah. house. Uh, then we have the Hall of Fa- the uh, Shelf of Fame. It's got Mr. Fist. Fisto's on it. Mr. The, Fisto. Wait a minute. The El Diablo comic book should be on the wall of shame. Yes, it should, actually. Uh, I got Bosk in the package still. We got the Killer Rabbit from uh, yeah. Monty Python. How Jar Jar get up there? Where's Jar Jar? He's over there. He should be on the, hall oh. of shame, the wall of shame. Who did that? Why is he wrapped in plastic? He might be worth something. He might be worth something someday. 
<laughs> no other character from that is worth anything except him. Oh my god. That's the one I think you got from Taco Bell, actually. Awesome. So. The character that no, almost no, it single-handedly awesome. Jar Jar. <laughs> character that almost single-handedly ruined the Star actually, Wars universe. Actually, they said universe. nobody's gonna buy this Jar Jar character. How can we get rid of it? We'll give it away for free with tacos. You see, who else is over there next to Fisto? Stinkor. So Stinkor. <laughs> So it is a quite a good wall of fame. Shelf of fame. Right. The, the wall of shame is blow rough. So we'll add that. So Mr. Long Neko. <laughs> Neko. From He-Man. So, uh, Neko, we are excited about your box. <laughs> Giddy. <laughs> he said one thing is for me, and I'm kind of worried. I don't know. I bet it's you're finally going to get your graphic novice Oh, yeah, I get my graphic novice shirt about time, bitches. Jeez. Anyways, moving on. I'll be infected with bubonic plague. Well, that is Canada. Or a box of anthrax. Be careful. Actually, the Pop Culture Cafe is from Canada, too. They kind of gave us hell, so we got to be nice. They gave us hell? I missed yeah. that. Yeah. Maybe it's full of Molson. What's that, a boot? Uh, I don't know. Speak of... Uh, I don't know. Uh, Dev is... Uh, Devin from Real Big Dev uh, from Seiko. I think he's from Canada. Michigan, yeah. but that's like Canada's suburb. That's, that's so. Canada South. Yeah. <laughs> and I think north of Ohio is Canada. Mm-hmm. So, Devin, a real big dev, listening to last week's At Bad Ideas podcast, which is actually two weeks ago, he said on the pod, ca- on the pod docket, what's pod docket? He has a docket of things that he's listening to, a podcast. Oh, we're on his docket. Yes. That's excellent. Thank you. He says, Blake is being a bit of a rock diva. I sense a theme this week. <laughs> You're not on Twitter. I am. And I yes. have to get a lot of fucking... Blake's a rock diva on this shit. Yeah. Look at this. <laughs> That's not rock. <laughs> this may have come as a surprise to people, but I am opinionated. <laughs> Just wait till we get to our top five, because Jeff and I have a sucky list. That's and it's right. going to you carry Because it. it's not going to rock. And I don't understand this talk about me being a diva or anything like rock that. Rock diva. A rock diva. But anyways, but... So what's, a, what's with the pets? What's with the Pez? How come I don't get raspberry and lemon Pez? I want raspberry and lemon Pez alternated in the Pez dispenser one and one and one and one and one. I'm not a diva. All I want is my Pez. I don't think that was annoying for the listeners on the table. (laughs) But you got a new Pez dispenser. Oh, yeah, I did. Very good. Number one fan, Doug, dropped it off. Look, and who is it? That's right. It's Chewbacca. (laughs) Oh, I thought that was a dog. Yeah. And what else did he give you? Pez. And the 1991 Cleveland Browns schedule? Yeah, that's pretty cool. Pocket schedule from 1991. <laughs> the last time they were, you know, as Bill Belichick's, Bill Belichick's first year as head coach of the Cleveland Browns. Yeah, huh, that worked out well for you. Yeah, that same year we drafted a guy named Michael Jackson. Ah! <laughs> who failed as a wide receiver. <laughs> Really? That's good. Nah, I'd stop. I'll stop. I'll stop. I'll stop. I'll stop. <laughs> That's right. Every time he got thrown the ball, we'd go, Thriller! <laughs> he only had one glove on. That's why he kept dropping yeah, it. it. Was. But nah, you know, I'm not a rock diva. I just want my fucking Pez, all right? Just about the Pez, okay? Anyways, Jordan at Hojo B1 says, Turns out Blake has good taste in rock music. Iraq diva. Yeah. <laughs> hey, thank you, Jordan. He says, uh, one host out of three ain't bad. Boo. True. J&J hair bands do not rock. They what? do. They rock the best. Hey, if you like that androgynous stuff, What's go wrong right with that? ahead. You got a problem right. with it? No. Not that there's anything wrong with that. Used to yeah. work on the docks. Oh, God, please. Okay, Don't Blake, continue. <laughs> All right, so kidding aside, you guys did defend some good bands, such as Green Day, Stone Temple Pilots, Matchbox 20. Hey, wait a minute. How did Matchbox 20 get in there? I mentioned them. Oh, I wasn't listening to you. It's normal. (laughs) I'm Jason. Hi. Yeah, or a few that he remembers. Uh, Regarding at Musings Podcast Picks... They did send in some uh, Musings and their bands. Yeah, so we got some listener feedback on some... Listener feedback on listener, listener feedback, feedback. on listener yes. feedback. Exactly. Man, that sounds, sounds kind of sexy. <laughs> I don't All know, right. but I'm kind of tripping out, man. Ooh, I got a half chub. <laughs> All right, showing at Metric some love. Hell yes. And Decemberus. This person has good taste. Who the hell's Decemberus? We got a couple of those that. The like Decemberus is a very good band. Their favorite song of mine is 16 Military Wives. Okay. Go ahead and look them up. It's pretty good. Okay. Uh, a band that's got. Uh, let me see. They write their own songs, play their own instruments, and they're 
talented. Bon Jovi? I mean, they're so rare yeah, to come across like these. Bon, bon, bon Jovi sounds like Bon Jovi. Bon Jovi sucks, all right? Uh, they write their own songs, they play their own instruments, and they're talented. And they have, they're fucking sexy and as hell. And they had nice hair in the 80s. And they're from New Jersey. Oh, Jeez, yeah, you win. Run away. Oh, yeah. you go. <laughs> they cancel out everything that the boss does, okay? Well, they're better than the boss. What? In every way, shape, and form. Oh, talk about overrated. Bruce Springsteen. Jesus. Oh, wait, he was going to be in my top five this wait, week. Wait, I was talking about Bruce Springfield. Oh. Rick Springfield? <laughs> oh, Rick Springfield. <laughs> I wish I had a Jesse's girl. Yeah. How do I find a woman like that? You know, they actually tried to find Jesse's girl. Mm-hmm. Uh, the story goes, he actually wrote that song about a girl from like a pottery class he was in several years ago. And they actually went back 20 years after the fact to go find who Jesse's girl was. <laughs> and they couldn't find the uh, enrollment list because oh, they had been destroyed. The records were destroyed. The records were destroyed. So Rick Springfield and, and the other people will never really remember who Jesse's girl is. I can't find her today. He's a uh, long line of many famous musicians like uh, Never Going to Give You Up, Never Going to Let You Down. Never is it Andy run Dalton? around and... Hurt you. <laughs> good old uh, Rick Astley oh, there. I confuse all those red haired ginger guys. <laughs> the Cleveland Browns motto. We're never gonna yeah. give you up, Johnny. Until no, next December week. Pretty yeah. good. Yeah. yeah, they're very good. Next, um, you're right. a lover. You're a pod lover. El Hano. At Ida Hano. He said, uh, just for this episode of At Bad Ideas Podcast, my hashtag Blake Boner is a Jeff Boner for Queensryche. Yay, I think. I, I think I want uh, a boner from Ida Heno. I think you do. Uh, He's a sexy man. So. I feel cheated on. I don't Not much going on to, in Idaho. I don't know how to react. You I should have come up with Queens right then. Jeff, you may be a five or a four here in Cincinnati, but in Idaho, it's a very low population. You'll probably be an eight or a nine. Four or five, thanks. <laughs> Maybe a three. Maybe a three. You'll probably be a seven in Idaho. <laughs> Hano's the nine, so <laughs> you're not close to Hano. I've seen Hano. He is sexy. You know, after a six pack, you can make it to five. <laughs> yeah, maybe, maybe. With beer goggles, I can climb up to a five. Yeah, there Jeff's a five. On With a scale beer. of one to five. Fifteen? Sure. <laughs> On a scale of 1 to 50. <laughs> no, but anyways, he goes on to say, it became a hashtag Jeff Blake boner. Yay! Duel I don't, with pixies. Ooh. But Blonde Filter made this week at hashtag all Jeff. I don't know. Is he made this week as in as this in you week put... or as in week as in not strong? No, uh, week. W-E-E-K. Oh, so yeah. it made his week. Uh, when it he made, wrote this, when uh, I was... Re- I won the, du- uh, the uh, duel because you picked Blondie on your list. He's, that's what he when said. When I read this real quickly, I thought, he's, stuff. I thought he said pixels. And I was like, why the fuck's he talking about pixels? pixels. Oh, pixies. pixies. Never mind. I'm yeah. silly. All right. He says, uh, I leave Bon Jovi to... At Angels Freak 7. Ne- uh, Neil. Is Neil from Dark yep. Angels. Out of Freaks. mad respect. And Green Day was a good pull. That's right, bitches. I'm making props for Green Day. I, I thought you were going to get a bunch of uh, hate mail for Green Day. Green I, Day's good. I mean, I'm surprised that that Green Day seemed to fallen out of fa- been fa- at, to have fallen out of favor when they became popular. Yeah, Dan Hipster. So, so everybody's like, oh, we have to hate them now. So that's why I thought you were going to get some some shit. It's like when Metallica sold out. Oh, they sold out. Fuck you, you would sell out too. Yeah, sold out, as Jason Newstead did. Yeah, every night, Mm. every show. (laughs) My 87 cars, you would sell out too. Next? Yeah, sure. You know, American Idiot. Love that. Appropriate. All right, anyway. (laughs) Asshole. From from Pam Morris at Pam World. She has her own world. You wish you did. Would you live in it? He said, uh, Yes. Please be careful with tattoos. I don't like neck and chest ones on females. I have four myself, but they can be covered. Smart approach to getting Smart tattoos. Smart approach, that is correct. I'm just saying, you know, back to the last story time. Story time. Story time we had. You know, uh, to the young listeners out there, don't give in to instant gratification. Try and think long term what this is going to look like. Long term. Okay, anyways. As far as top rock bands, what about... The Runaways, those girls could rock. Yeah, Joan Jett, 
uh, Runaways, early early girl punk rock. That's good. I only know one song from the Runaways. That's Cherry Bomb, and that's adequate at best. Yeah, I'm not a big Cherry Bomb fan. <laughs> No, they're kind of like the. Um, That's why I don't like it. <laughs> female punk forefront, but then after that, the only thing Joan Jack could do is do covers. But anyways, but Lita Ford went on and did some good shit with I Ozzy Osbourne. Rock and roll. Oh my God, Lita Ford! What was that one song she had in the eighties? Uh, heavy metal. The one, the, was that the one? No. <laughs> God. Not that one. Uh, the one with Ozzy or the one without Ozzy. I can't remember. Because with Ozzy, they did uh, Close Your uh-huh. Eyes Forever. I just remember her going, uh-huh. Oh, that's, uh, I went to a party last Saturday night. I got drunk. I didn't, didn't didn't get get got in a fight. I got drunk. Got in a fight. Something like that. That's the uh-huh. worst thing ever. That's coming from me. It ain't no big thing. thing. Uh-huh. <laughs> yeah, that was her. But anyways, oh, she goes, okay, I seriously love Blake. Ah, yay, Pam. Uh, episode 30. With the Turtles recasting and Raphael as dead Kurt Cobain, she uh, just Peter Pants at work. <laughs> that's very good. We you know, got Cobains. I would have to say that that's pretty. It's pretty brave to go back and listen to all of her podcasts in order. I think mean, that should be heralded. Uh, a lot of people are actually going back and listening to our old ones. It su- shocks me that how many people are actually going back. Like, really? Oh, uh, yeah. Uh, I'm not kidding. And uh, so we appreciate that. Thank you for yeah. listening and going back to the old ones. Uh, don't judge. Uh, we were a little rough in the beginning. Still, maybe. You know, I think about thirty uh, the the weekend at Cobain's was I think where I think we got our traction. Yeah. Yeah. Dead Cobain was just. There. The we were doing okay, and then Blake showed up and just you know screwed it all up. <laughs> and they gave us another twelve episodes to get back into rhythm. <laughs> That's rhythm. where he blew out some brains. Yeah. <laughs> wow. Actually, I think I think Pam, if she's going back and listening to these chronologically, I mean, we know they're all Fs, okay? But what grade of F? Is it be like she should like grade each F episode for us like A, B, C, or D? I would say most of them are A's. A's. Yeah. I, I, Anyone that I'm on is an A+. Plus. Mm-hmm. I think there's two of them there in the 70s that are probably Ds. Yeah, yeah. We did lose our uh, timing with Jeff being, you know, furry rabies, so that was interesting. Ds for um, dandy, right? Scab Jeff did do a good job, though. Yeah. yeah. It would be nice if Scab Jeff actually listens to the show, though. Well, yeah, but, you know. <laughs> That'd be cool. Let's Wrap it up here. Yeah. All right, from Dr. Number One at Dr. Number One. He says, uh, what do you think of Deggle's costume at Bad Ideas Podcast? From Arrow? From Arrow. Yeah, I had to... At first, I thought this was Diggler's costume. I'm like... <laughs> Dirk Diggler? <laughs> Dirk Diggler. I'm like, oh, wait. No, anyway, that's not it. Does he wear a costume? He does now. Dirk oh, Diggler? Dirk Diggler. <laughs> <laughs> Zip. Uh, hey, have you seen this? I it's have a, not. It's a guy in a funny helmet. I heard the I people talking it. about his helmet, he, but I have not seen it. He looks like Magneto. It. He does. And it does not look good. So it doesn't no. control magnetism? No. Then? No. Uh, no. Well, then. All I know is like really some bodyguard co- guy with a helmet. That's yeah, it. He doesn't, it doesn't cover his face that much either. Like, you can see his fe- features, I think. Yeah, when you see your eyes and nose, you can, like, you know, point them out in a, uh, you know, police lineup. lineup. <laughs> I do agree. Um, yeah, I, I'm not too sold on it. But. but, you know, I did see some of the Arrow's costumes, and I did find it strikingly interesting that it looked like uh, Garrett from the Thief video game series. Yes, yes. A little reminiscent mm-hmm. of uh, Garrett. I wonder if they're... Uh, Are you talking, talking about the new that. one, too? Yeah. The new one looks... With the hood mm-hmm. and the leather and the arrows and his thing. And it's very thing. similar to the comic books, too. He does yeah. kind of look like that. Oh, cool. Uh, in the comic books, so... That was a nice pull of Thief. Good job. Yeah, so I just Thanks. went ahead and I started to uh, yeah. Google it, and I typed in Diggle, and Diggle's costume pops right yeah. up. Yeah, what do you think? Oh, I thought you were about to say a giant uh, Dirk Diggler penis popped up. Kind of reminds me of Night Thrasher. Oh, God, from the books. yeah. That's what it kind of looks like to me. Ugh, I'd rather have a Night Thrasher. What was the He-Man guy that had the big helmet and ran into walls? Ram, uh, Ram, Ram Man. Man. Ram-o. <laughs> okay. Ram-a-man. Ram-o. Okay, time out. <laughs> Ram-a-man. 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 That's sad that we both knew that, and it's even sadder that was the most creative name they could have thought of. Oh, that's Ram-a-man. how you know what it is. When it, <laughs> what, it, it's something that ends in man, usually. Beast Man. Ram well, I told man. you that on YouTube a couple weeks ago. Or in an O. One yeah. night I was really bored. I started looking at I got hooked on He-Man commercials for the toys. 27 yeah. minutes later, I finished all of them because one guy compiled them for 27 <laughs> minutes. And I go, what's worse, me watching this or the 
guy compiling them for 27 minutes. And Ram Man was going through rocks to help He Man. Oh and I'm my like, gosh. couldn't he just pick them up? He's the strongest guy. Like, why do you need a guy with the Ram? Yes, exactly. And he does, I don't think he has many uh, wait, needs for Ram Man outside of rocks and maybe to get into a door. I mean, really, <laughs> that's about his own only uh, choice. I mean, his only power. I just think it was like a, a very phallic joke. Either one, well, then here's the other thing. He's a man with a big helmet on his head and it looked kind of And he phallic. was short and stubby, too. Short and stubby. <laughs> and he liked to ram things. My question is, though, why do you need Ram Man and Fisto? Wouldn't one do that suffice? How many He Man action figures ended in Dash O? Oh, I would say a lot. Stink yeah. or. Oh, that's or. O or, sorry. Or, yeah. O, or man. Man. Man is the big one. Or begins with it, man at arms. Uh, they they made man at arms one of the first ones. Were like, that's a good idea. Just keep throwing man in it. It's yeah. like they had a four year old boy to come up with naming things. <laughs> that's I wouldn't pretty be much surprised. I think what it was a four year old. Boy. Hey, this guy stinks. What do you think his name should be? Billy Stinkor. Okay. This guy looks like Moss. What do you think his name should be? Moss Man. Next. <laughs> <laughs> this guy has a mechanical neck. Mecha neck. <laughs> <laughs> hey, that's. Better than <laughs> neck man. Or... This guy has a big fist, Mr. Fisto. <laughs> <laughs> My daddy says he does the fisto to mommy. Uh, <laughs> I was looking at some of these other pictures on Diggle's costume. Apparently some people are going around and putting uh, him in other costumes. Like there's him dressed as Green Lantern and him dressed as Kato. Uh, and... <laughs> well, they, the rumor was that he was going to be John Stewart. Yeah, I think that's probably why they did the uh, Green I would be Lantern fine with that. Lot, but... <laughs> Kato, him dressed as Black Driver. Black Driver? <laughs> Is it Driver Miss Daisy? <laughs> Pretty much. He looks like Hoke. Take me to the Piggly Wiggly! <laughs> okay, I would crack up if, uh, if Oliver Queen asked him to take him to Piggly Wiggly one day. <laughs> one episode. Okay, is that your... Uh... Uh, what we got? Is that our... That's uh... it. That's our... Oh, I've got Face Off. Are we going Face Off this week or are we going to push it back? Oh, well, we can do Face Off this week. Okay, let's do Face Off real quick. Face Off from Bobby H. And we're out of time. It's time for another installment of the News of the Geek. Okay, uh, while speaking to Entertainment Weekly, here is creator Tim Kring uh, about the upcoming Heroes Reborn revival. Starts in two weeks. Uh, he said Hayden Panteri's uh, Claire Bennett will not be back as she died a year prior to her story starting. That's I say that's bullshit, man. Because the whole premise of the heroes was save the cheerleaders, save the world, and save Blake's boner. <laughs> Nashville has her wrapped up. You can watch her on Nashville. Yeah, watch her on Nashville. Just mute it. No. Uh, Claire. Oh, I miss Hayden Panettiere. Claire more than likely died in the terrorist attack in Odessa, Texas, that drove people with abilities into hiding and setting off the events of the new Heroes Reborn series. Sure, whatever. Takes place five years after Claire revealed she has powers. And yeah, uh, it's, they, she's still a main, major theme. Maybe they're hoping that she'll get a Nashville crossover. Oh, that would be fun. <laughs> <laughs> she's really in hiding as a Nashville star. Worked for right. Miley Cyrus, right? Hannah Montana? Oh, <laughs> See? yeah. Yeah. Oh. Uh, this is actually the 10th season, as uh, there were seasons in between, which were never shown. We just didn't see that. I had always wanted to tell the story of when the world discovers these people. Well, you could have done that if you didn't go to shit on your series after episode, season two. I need Sorry, more Tim. Hayden Panettiere. Uh, less hero. Uh, actually, uh, yeah. No offense, but her character ran her storyline. Was she in all did five seasons, I guess? Four. Four seasons. There were only four, four seasons. I thought it was four. only three. They did four. I knew seasons. they did more than yeah. three. And at the end of the fourth season is when she came out on the news, and that was the last part of the last is, episode. Yeah, they did. She is married the, a hockey player. And nobody saw her ever again. What's that old boot? Uh, did she? Or I'm sorry. Was the carnival season good? I think I've asked you that before, but was it good? It was better than the previous season, okay. I think. But it still, like I said, everything was. The, the, they were still focusing on. You know, Claire Bennett whining about everything she whined about for the last three years. Ugh. And it kind of got a little, okay, you know, move on, is how I was feeling. Yeah, I think uh, my family and I stopped watching it after season two. In it, season three, we started going... Yeah, season three is when I gave up. Yeah. Did anybody, uh, 
I'm looking at the Entertainment Weekly, uh, all the buzz on 115 shows for the new fall TV preview. Is anybody excited about any shows specifically for the fall? God damn it. Um, no, I don't we can talk about what, next week. That's when yeah, we can talk about next week. How about we do that? Let's talk about next week. Yeah, next week so I can I do some research. I wanted to see The Bastard Executioner or whatever Starts tonight. Is. I re- DVR'd it. Did you get caught up on Fear of the Walking Dead? Yes. Okay, did you watch last night's episode? I was saving it for Hidden Gems. Did you watch that last night? Yes, I was I, saving it for Hidden Gems. No, we can talk no, about it now if you no, want. No, no offense, so, Blake. Uh, Fear the Walking Dead is not hidden. But it is the number one show right now. <laughs> okay. I mean, I mean, uh, Hidden Gems, kind of, it's got to be something uh, that nobody's like familiar with. Okay, all right. Everybody who listens to this has heard of it. I did not, this, this, not, I did not, I did not see the, the last stop, episode. Put it back and drive. Oh, turn Jason has not seen it. No, I can't talk about it. I can't go ahead. It's fine. I'm going to watch Bright tonight. All right, I don't want they to all spoil. Die and it ends the series. <laughs> yeah, they're all going to die. <laughs> I don't want to spoil anything for you, but just remember this: when you're watching episode three, let me see. There's a possible plague. Uh huh. There's possible riot. Well, plague. there are riots. Mm-hmm. Civilization's breaking down. You're seeing weird as bleep stuff going down. My uh, and power grids go out. Phones, things don't work. My only question is, if I was in that situation, I would be listening to a goddamn radio. How come they're not listening to the radio and they don't know what's going on? Have one of those crank radios. Um, exactly. We because do. the people in the radio stations have been affected and they can't and they're not broadcasting. Boom. <laughs> Show them trying to pick up a radio thing. Well, that was my issue last episode. They did that off camera. It's a goddamn radio. It's a national disaster. It's an emergency. Turn on the fucking radio. They did it off camera. Episode two. Get the fuck out of L.A. Oh, yeah. Yes, yeah. We're just going to mosey about. Don't yeah. worry about it. Eh, we'll spin it, whatever. Yeah, you, you obviously have a place in the desert. Get the fuck to the desert then. Yeah, it's uh, okay. Mark, who runs our Tangent Bound Network, is kind of a uh, prepper. And I'm going to ask him to send it. Oh, in. he's a doomsday prepper. He is. Was and, he on the History Channel? No, I don't think he was. Oh, okay. But uh, he lives up in Cleveland area, so. Cl- good enough. He's prepared. Yeah. He is prepared. Well, it is Cleveland. It's going to hit. Uh, I'm going to ask him to send in a recorded thing of what we should do. I'm serious. Like, I would like to see his take on this. So, I'm, yeah. I'm walking dead. Uh, I'm uh, probably going to watch the second episode tonight. You're not going to spoil it. It's fine. Uh, I mean, I'm not. Well, just keep that in mind. Okay. My issue is the whole time, get the as, fuck as out of As they're trying town. to figure out what's going on, turn on the goddamn radio for emergency broadcast. Don't That's what it's there for. And you can get one of those crank radios. You That's all you have to that. do. You can even do that. Yeah. Exactly. That's why you have one. I yeah. do. Like, I would trust them to tell us the truth. Well. No. The, the, go- the government's <laughs> going to try and keep it under wraps. Do you have a first aid kit at your house? Well, the government rolls in at the end of three. Oh, about time. You see what happens there. Okay. And then, then, then you can give me some more feedback there. What you think? Because uh, do you have like first aid kit at your house? Uh, yeah. Okay. Because kids play soccer. Oh, okay. Yeah, I have it for uh, tornadoes. You yeah. know, prepping. I got some water. Thirty-six bottles of water. You know, I, I actually thought about spending some money and getting one of those like uh, thirty-day survivor kit packs. Yeah. Little Just, bug out packs. Just because if some you know something happens where you're out of uh, mm-hmm. you know here in Cincinnati, Southwest Ohio, a couple years ago, we did go without electricity for about what four or five days. I did not. We were lucky for that. Yeah, we we were out for about an hour and a half at my house. Yeah, for yeah, some in our area, we were out for about four or five days. You know, and I was up on top of the house hunting deer, <laughs> just shooting at people too. Yeah. Okay. Well, Jeff and I used to live close to each other, and our area never had lights go out for that long time. It was very no, nice. I, I think something important was somewhere on our grid, because our yes. grid always got back up quickly. And even out here in the country, my, our grid usually goes down, if it does, uh, maybe two hours mm-hmm. tops. So it's been kind of nice. Every place I've hit, it's been kind of nice. But uh, I, I've thought about, uh, well, personally, I, like I said a couple weeks ago, I'd much rather have a bunker underground, but that's just me. So yeah. as I get older, I keep thinking... Could spend fifty thousand on this, right? A bunker with a man cave. Yeah, a couple beds, you know, a couple areas. They're really nice. They have laundry in there. Oh, yeah, there's all kinds of uh, neat stuff that yeah. they got out there nowadays. I'm thinking we should do something. You know, like you can that. just take like a, one of those semi uh, fuel tankers. The you know the the tanker just mm-hmm. buried in your backyard. Or the cargo and shipping it holders. Into, yeah, exactly. the cargo is yeah. another thing they say is cheap too. Yeah, it's ten thousand to get the cargo cargo thing. container. Yeah. yeah, and then you have to connex box. Yeah, bury it. You want you want to go in on this? Got to have an air tunnel. Well, 
The problem would be I'd have to get from where I'm at to here, and that's going to be a major problem. I think you could probably do it if you did it early enough. I would have everything there, so all you would have to do is get the kids and your, your wife in the car and go. Yeah, see, that's a problem. Now yeah. that now that we've got people spread out all over the place, it gets more tough. It gets huh? tougher. I'm offering. I'm offering. Yeah, okay. I'm offering. Okay, moving on. Uh, from The Guardian, they uh, reviewed The Visit, M. Night Shyamalan Ding Dong's uh, uh. latest... <laughs> Yeah, <laughs> we'll get to this. In box I mean, off. how could he like top wayward pines? Stop it. Uh, he says there's a ter- terrible sense of dread looking in lurking in M Night Shyamalan's latest. Sadly, it has nothing to do with the boring shaky cam story about two irritating teenagers spending some grim light time with their. I, I noticed you skipped over incandescently. <laughs> yes, I did. You are afraid to say that word. With their unhinged grandparents. Yeah, two uh, incandescently irritating teenagers spend some grim light time with their unhinged grandparents. Okay, take it over. Instead, it's the horrible realization that the filmmaker may actually have made a movie worse than Lady in the Water. Is that possible? Apparently it is. See, I've heard good reviews about this, and then this like just bashes it. I so know, I'm kind of surprised. Going. It's great. Is it meant to be a horror film or a comedy? The publicity calls it an original thriller, but it's neither of those things. <laughs> And this is the only reason we're reading this, because it's a pretty fucking re- good review. Only Endurance Test it adequately <laughs> describes the ill-judged shenanigans that ensue. Endurance Test. As our two young heroes film their estranged Nana and Papa scratching at the walls, puking on the floor, and mysteriously stockpiling soiled nappies in the woodshed. <laughs> <laughs> Can you spot that ineffable plot twist that looks noisily in the corner? Can you get a refund? Please bring back the last Airbender. I would, I would like to know if any of the uh, listeners out there have actually seen this movie, and then tell if this, this is right or not. You could even send in a audio review of the show, of the th- uh, movie, written review doesn't matter. Um, yeah, you, you know what? If you write a review and send it to us. At the History of Bad Ideas, the History of Bad Ideas on gmail.com. We will, uh, as long as it's, uh, you know, adequately written, adequately written, that's, I'll put it up. Shut up. That's why none of mine get uh, published. Because <laughs> I'll put it not, up on the Musings website. <laughs> don't use any big words like incandescently because Jason won't be able to word. read it. I didn't see that word. So uh, I w- was going to go on to moviespoiler.com today to look yeah. at what happened with the big twist. Was, but I kind of, felt, kind of forgot about it. I could tell you what it is. Do you, have you seen it? Yeah, just go episode 10 of Wayward Pines. It's not the same. <laughs> Are you going to go see this, Blake? No. No. Oh. Why? I think we should. I just wasted 10 hours of my life on his Wayward Pines. Would you Why stop it? It was a good movie show. Peelthorange.net. Mm, sounds fruity. It does. No, uh, I'm my inmate this week. I'm my inmate. Oh, yeah. And he's reporting that insiders at Netflix are already planning their next series of Marvel shows, including Moon Knight in 2018 with Bushman as the main villain. I think he's a He-Man character, isn't he? He-Man. <laughs> Bushman. <laughs> he just has a bush all around him. <laughs> Ferno. Yeah, <laughs> Bushman and Ferno. He was in the 1970s. He was made <laughs> with fire. <laughs> different type of bush. <laughs> 70s bush. Uh... He needs trimmed. Uh, the Punisher in 2018 with Jigsaw as the main villain. Bushman. Jigsaw could be fun. Uh, 2019 Deathlock with Fixer as the main villain. Fixer. Or Fixer. I'll fix you. Oh. <laughs> Deathlock is, uh, they're bringing the character over from, uh, what's his face, from Agents of S.H.I.E.L.D. Agents of S.H.I.E.L.D., all right. And Spider-Woman, which I'm intrigued by in 2019 with Madame Hydra as the main villain. Ooh. Who would play Spider Woman? Someone we don't know. But if we did know, oh man, Peyton hey, Panetieri. Think. Think, no. think, think TV. What? Think TV because they pulled a lot of people from TV for the the TV the yeah. series now. The Jessica girl that, Jones, the girl that plays Spider or Supergirl because her show will be canceled in the first season. Oh God, it should be. I'm sorry, <laughs> I don't know what everybody else saw with the pilot, but I saw crap. Um... <laughs> I'm trying to think who you could get for that. Any thoughts? Because she's she has brunette hair, right? Black yeah, hair. Yeah, you could always dye someone. Yeah, it could be whatever. Shelley Long. No, I don't think she's age appropriate for the role. Blake Too Lively. Young. Blake Lively actually Blake could Lively work. would be age appropriate for. the But role. I saw her in Green Lantern. That's not good for anyone. Uh, Kate Hudson. No. Too uh, old. Ronda Rousey. 
Now she'll be too, too busy doing the movies. She'll be doing oh, Roadhouse. Right. She'll be at Roadhouse. Roadhouse. Or Ms. Marvel. Ro- she'll be doing Roadhouse 2. <laughs> Electric Boogaloo? Yeah. <laughs> Gone in 60 seconds. Is that the sequel? <laughs> no, that's the porn version. Oh, sorry. Uh, Frank Castle is appearing on season 2 of Daredevil, so by 2018 he'll be established. Deathlock has already appealed in Agents of S.H.I.E.L.D. Spider Woman is fair game, and by 2019, Spider Man will have already been established. Wait a minute, the, in the fourth reboot? Uh, I was thinking they would be rebooting him the by 2019. <laughs> yes. Uh, and Blade has been thrown around as of late, and could end up, could end up being how Moon Knight is introduced in the Marvel shared universe. I would have no problem with Blade and Moon Knight. Didn't Moon Knight have some of those cool uh, sickle moon shurikens or something? No. No, okay, anyway. No, I don't. All I know is... The only thing I know hardly anything about Moon Knight other than he's, like, uh, insane. All I know about Moon Knight is that Marvel keeps pushing him as the next big thing, and, and he always fails. Yeah. Didn't like, he have this really cool white hooded outfit? Yes. Yes, he did, actually. Right. You're correct. Look at you! Yeah. And a van. It was a creepy van. <laughs> and, a, and a creepy 70s Shazam! <laughs> I, I think Just it like had Suzanne. an airbrushed wizard on the side. <laughs> yes. I am Moon Knight. Come on in. <laughs> oh, now you're that. making him French? <laughs> <laughs> that, okay, time out. I didn't even try that. That just actually just came out in the French every time I do an impression. I do apologize for that. A Fallout themed Monopoly is in the works and it's coming soon. Fallout. According to the official Fallout Twitter account. Yay. Uh, uh, stop that, making themed Monopolies. It's dead and done with. It is by, I'd buy the Fallout Monopoly. Okay, find some Because I'm to play a fan of Fallout. You. Then play Fallout. I do, but it's not in a Monopoly form. Yeah, that's a good thing. So, <laughs> I would like to see a Cleveland Browns themed Monopoly. What would be Boardwalk? Tim uh, Couch? Uh, no, uh. Bernie Board- Kozar? Boardwalk would be, uh, what's his name? Uh, the Dog Otto. Count. What is it? Otto, uh, Otto Graham. Otto Graham. Otto Graham would be, uh,. Jim Brown. Hey, Jim Brown. Jim. Oh, yeah, Jim Brown would probably be more You don't have people in... I guess we don't. <laughs> <laughs> you well, laid on Jim Brown. <laughs> yeah, hey, buy Jim Brown for $500. <laughs> I'm going to buy... I want to build some apartments on Jim Brown. <laughs> <laughs> so who's Baltic? I don't know. Johnny, Johnny Manziel. <laughs> I think we're missing the point of, of uh, Monopoly. Uh, let's see. Uh, Who would be uh, Boardwalk in Monopoly? It'd probably be like the Rock and Roll Hall of Fame. Oh, you're actually going Cleveland. Yeah. That's Cleveland. We're talking Browns. The Browns. Specific. Just the Browns. So it's Browns. <laughs> it's, it's an yeah, end zone because no one ever gets there. <laughs> no, that'd be every time you pass go, it would be like an end zone. <laughs> For the other team. Yeah. <laughs> oh, instead of go, it's called interception. <laughs> Hey, I'm you like know the Browns is the only NFL <laughs> no, franchise <laughs> that has a GM that's suspended, a coach that's suspended, and players that are suspended. We've got suspensions at every level of the NFL franchise. That's the only thing the Browns are winning at, suspensions. Yeah. <laughs> Good for them. Hey, that's you awesome. got to win at something. That's right. Uh, a Bethesda spokesperson confirmed this tweet, the tweet this morning, and said to, be, said to expect more information on the set soonish. Fallout 4 is due out November 4th for PlayStation 4, Windows PC, and Xbox One. Are you buying it? Yeah. Okay. I'd, I'd buy it. Okay. Do you have a PlayStation? I may have to upgrade. That's the I was going to say, I think yeah. you're going to have to upgrade. Another, uh, so there you go. Uh, everybody excited about Fallout 4? I've never played a Fallout game. I've heard they're great. You're missing out. I've heard they're great. They're is good. this another one of these post-apocalyptic no. pieces of shit? Okay. It's not a piece of shit. It's like Wayward Pines. It's really good. It's Eye of the okay, Beholder. Yeah, there you go. <laughs> are you running it's around, good. like, killing infected people? There are infected people in it, but there's a lot more. Isn't there kind of a partial role-playing game, too? Yeah. Okay. I've heard really good things about all of them, You so. can buy and build your own Pip Boys now, you know, on there, so. A, a Pip Boy? Boss? Pip like, Boy? what, there's gambling? No. Pip Boy. Okay. You have to play the game to understand what Pet I'm Boys? Oh, you can buy Pet Boys? <laughs> Why are you buying a Pet Boys? Boys? Are you, are I want you, the guy with the glasses. Oh, damn it, I want boys. the guy with the glasses. Who gets a muffler? I want to buy a muffler from you. No. So do you use a muffler to like, fix the cars in Fallout? No. This is a whole yeah. different game than I thought. No, it, it's... It's 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 uh, it's Mad Ma- Max Auto Body. Is that what it is? No, it's really, it's, okay. it's really good. It's really good. You should try it. You'll like it. I've heard it. I just It's very good. I just keep getting... 
I have so many games I need to play. This is your president. The, in the movie? Yes, show? in the, in the in, show, yes. Okay. Uh, another addition to a movie franchise was announced this past week. Yay! Mirrored Pictures will be bringing Jeepers Creepers 3, baby, to I, theaters. Hold on a second. How is that a movie franchise? Because there's be- two. This is the third. This will be the third. So if you make three of something, it's a franchise. Hell yeah! Pretty, pretty much when you make a second, you become a franchise. Oh my Sequels goodness. are franchise. Kobe must be a dynasty by now. Uh, 89 episodes. Yeah. So the uh, bar fr- must be low. What I want to know is what was the name of the uh, uh, company that's making the movie? Myriad. Yeah. Oh, okay. Jason said Merd. Merd. Well, you know, it was incandescently in that sentence. I'm making with, fun of speech of pessimism. In the theaters with Francis Ford Coppola. You know, Francis producing. Ford Coppola. And Victor Salva directing. So, Coppola is actually attaching his name to a Yeah, he's, a, he's really movie. excited, and I'm kind of scared. I actually I had to look it up. Right? I didn't know Justin Long was in the original. He was in the original. He died. Back in 2001. They said <laughs> they're bringing the, van, the car back that he was driving in, and they're going to make it more grounded like the first one was. The first one was not horrible. The second, I never saw the first one. I saw the second one, and it was terrible. Great movie. And about a month ago, I, I stumbled across it on cable and watched about a half hour of it, and I'm like... Oh my god, this is even worse than I remember. They don't get on and off the bus that often. No, I was very disappointed yeah. at the number of times they got on or off the bus. So, uh, there is your news of the geek. It's time for Box Office Bombs. Oh, uh, this week in our crappy box office, uh, listener Doug had to point out, We <laughs> Are Your Friends fell from 2,333 theaters in week two to 274 theaters in week three. It's a Zac Efron that's DJ. A, that's a 90% dedu- reduction, isn't it? Look at uh, you with the math. That uh, is like... Look at the big brain on Brad over there. <laughs> brain on Brad. That is a terrible drop. <laughs> I don't know if I've heard any worse than that. Uh, and something called American Ultra has only made $14 million on a $28 million budget. That's a Jesse Eisenberg one that he might be a uh, secret agent or something. Remember Doug was in here a couple weeks ago and he's like, oh, it doesn't look that bad. Ah, and well, then it bombed. Uh, it bombed. So it Kristen Stewart enough. was in it. Oh. Yeah. What? I must have been tuned out. I don't remember. I've never seen a trailer for this. I never remember talking about Jesse Eisenberg and Kristen Stewart being in a new movie together since I didn't like their old movie together. And we'll get to trailers here in a second because I really don't have a clue on any of these movies. So go ahead, Jeff. What's at the box really, office this week? No. Okay. All right. Uh, number one, The Perfect Guy made $26.7 million in its opening weekend on a $12 million budget. What the fuck is Perfect Guy? Well, that I don't know. A uh, perfect guy is a uh, woman who thinks she's found a perfect guy, but he turns out to be a horrible stalker dude. Really? I think. Oh. That uh, it's sounds... based on the uh, review that I saw. That Blake's sounds... in charge of the movie reviews because <laughs> yeah. he tells us exactly what's out there. Yeah, it actually sounds worse than I would have thought of if we were, like, you know, doing that on a, uh, uh, what do you call it, segment. Uh, uh, plot lines? Plot line segment. Yeah, we need some plot lines. Send us some plot lines, people. Uh, actually, is this uh, with Jennifer Lopez? I think I saw that. Uh, I no. can't remember. It's, it uh, is mostly Sana it. Lafayne, yeah, it's Michael most... Early, Morris Chestnut, L. Scott Caldwell, Charles, Charles S. Dutton. Yeah, oh, it's got rock in it. It's got to be good. That's <laughs> mostly an uh, African-American cast. Okay. Uh, so J-Lo's not in it. No J-Lo. She no does J-Lo. not sleep with her... Student that looks thirty, but is actually eighteen in the movie. No, that movie was out. Uh, in we are summer. neighbors, or something. I don't know. Uh, number two, Jason's favorite, The Visit, made twenty-five and a half million in its opening weekend on a budget of five million. Look at that, five times its budget back. Five million. Okay, I've seen previews for this. I've seen previews for it too. It's typical M Night Shyamalan. Mm-hmm. I'm landing I guess I guess old people puking on the floor is pretty cheap. <laughs> and scratching at the walls. Yeah. <laughs> uh, War Room made seven and a half million, a total of thirty nine million on a three million dollar budget. I had to look that up because I had no idea what it was about. It was number one for the last two weeks. Oh, when we had to take a week off. Yeah, when we took the weeks we off, it was week off. off. It was number one. Okay. I have no idea. I don't know what is it, Blake. I have no idea. I forget. Oh, you said you looked it up. I, I thought did. maybe it was a... Obviously, the plot didn't stick with me because I, I didn't write it down. Okay, well... Uh, I just wrote AA because it was another all African-American cast. And I was saying, hey, top 
two of the three are African American. Yeah. A movies. seemingly perfect family look to fix their problems with the help of Miss Clara, an older, wiser woman. That's that, that's the plot. Is it by Tyler Perry? Uh, that's a t- is uh, it Medea? Because Medea's funny. Uh, oh. Let's see. Yeah, I don't even know any of the really? cast really. Uh, wow. But apparently, it's filled with heart, humor, and wit. I find that hard to believe. It might be. Could I know be. nothing about it. I actually stand by my ground that Tyler Perry's Diary of a Mad Black Woman was actually really good until Medea came in. Every part that she was in was horrible, yeah. but every time that she wasn't in it, it was a good movie. I don't say I'd say so really if you good. cut out Tyler Perry, it was a decent movie. It was, yes. And well, he, he played two characters in it, didn't he? Yeah. Medea, she was not much, it was not in it that one because it yeah. was her first It was the one. first movie with... Yeah. Medea, but apparently he's been running that character for years yeah. before that. Eugene Levy got in on it, so that's good. Uh, number four, A Walk in the Woods made four and a half million, a total of twenty million on a ten million dollar budget. Old guys walking in the woods. Yep. Yeah, pretty much. Zip. Old guys walking in the woods, going, "Hey, wouldn't you like to have done this when you were young?" No. Sure. All right, Mission Colon Impossible Dash Rogue Nation still in the top five. Four more million, hundred eighty-eight million on a one fifty million dollar budget, so it made its money, and then some. Especially internationally, we'll be seeing Mission Impossible Five uh, because it's uh, the movie selections out there now are so. Oh, wait, weak. that was five, wasn't it? it we'll was be seeing five, Mission yeah. Impossible Six. So weak. <laughs> There's nothing else to go see. Oh, this coming week, there's tons. Uh, we got Black Mass coming out. Johnny, Johnny Depp, Depp, Johnny Depp story of that looks Whitey creepy. Bulger. Whitey Bulger, that's right. <laughs> I say yeah. Whitey, Whitey Ford. Ford. <laughs> <laughs> that would be fun to see. Yeah. Uh, or Captive. Whitey Herzog. I want to see him as Whitey yeah. Herzog. Oh, that would be. Uh, Captive is coming out this week. Anybody know what Captive is? Uh, uh, that's where a woman addicted to drugs, recovering, gets held hostage in her own room by a convict and they fall in love. Are you serious? No, I'm dead fucking serious. Oh, God. Okay. Well, moving on. Oh, but the good thing about it, it does star Kate Mara. I was going, oh, God. Well, I guess you only can go uh, up after Fantastic Four. I, I, I think. Four. Uh, yeah. Captive. Uh, she's no Hayden Panetary. No. No. Uh, and then Maze Runner. Maze Runner, The, the Scorch Trials. Trials. Because the original goofy ass shit just wasn't enough. I don't think they're in a maze anymore, so it kind of defeats no, the purpose. They're making them run through the desert and survive. Yeah. Ha, ha, well, you made it through this. Now go do that. But ha, it's ha. not a maze. Why am I. I don't know. Why is it called Maze Runner? Because the name of the series is Maze Runner. Boo. Well, Anyways. why is, you know, all these things, that the first movie and then they all. Star Wars. Divergent. Everything. They have to throw Star Wars on the. Title hey, of everything. Hey, 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 hey. Uh, well, they do. No, stop it. <laughs> uh, buy sell this week. M Night Shyamalan. Yeah. If you hadn't sold him by now, you <laughs> might as well hold on to exactly. him. Exactly. <laughs> he might make something that doesn't suck someday. Maybe. <laughs> Wayward Pines was good. No. Was not. It's a fisticuffs of wayward uh, pines. Now I'm going to have to start watching that so I can yes, choose you a side. Yes, you are. You're going to have to watch it so you can be the deciding vote. Well, I threw beer on you, so I'm going to lose this vote. <laughs> oh, like that's how I'm going to get revenge? <laughs> not. Uh, he's more diabolical than that. Uh, okay, there you go. There's your uh, box office. This is a Danger Entertainment podcast. DangerEntertainment.net. Danger Entertainment Podcast Network. That top five music can only mean one thing. It's time for our top five list. That's right. All right. This is Blake's doing top five. Bands you should be listening to. Top five bands that are probably lesser known. Yeah, and then that created a lot of problems because I was like, well, what would it be? Top five bands you never heard of that you should be listening to? Or top five <laughs> bands that aren't well known that you should be listening to? Or top five bands that says you are listening to 
As in, should it be recent? With like the past couple of years that people should be listening to? I got so confused. The good news over is over my own top five idea. The Twitterverse really helped us out on this one because oh, everybody's awesome. got a thousand different versions of this. Yeah, good. so we'll probably blow through our list real quick and then read what everyone else because likes to say. Because I'll be honest, I don't know what this was. What this list is the top because five bands that you don't know that you should know about, maybe. Well, the top five bands that you know about, but you think other people should should know, know about. about. I don't know. I. I was so if you worried. don't know about them, how can they be on your list? I don't know. <laughs> and I'll just say it right now. I know nothing about music, so my list could get ugly. So All I know, I know what I like. Okay. Uh, so, Blake, you start uh, at number uh, five. Uh, all right, I will start at number five. All right. This God, is, how many do you have on your list? I've got a lot, but <laughs> I narrowed it down. I struggled to find five. Me too. <laughs> I got a whole page here. Shit. Can I borrow one? <laughs> sure. Just don't take the one that I circled because it's on my list. <laughs> All right. So uh, I went with a uh, a four person punk funk rock band from Columbus, Ohio. Mm-hmm. Uh, formed in 1985. They are called the Royal Crescent Mob. Okay. I think I heard of them. You may have heard of them because you're from Ohio. Now, they had uh, several albums that came out from 86 to 94, but uh, the big one that everybody may know is from Spin the World and Midnight Roses, but uh, they got a lot of other quality stuff. If you want some Royal Crescent Mob, you're not going to find them on iTunes, but you can go to YouTube and type in Royal Crescent Mob, and they got a a number of uh, songs... That you can listen to basically almost their whole catalog because uh, the lead singer, um, I think um, uh, Brian Emsch or David Ellison, I forget which one, actually put them all up on YouTube for everybody. So you get some of their old garage, literally old garage stuff that they did to some of the more fine and uh, polished um, uh, things that you can do. Now, the interesting thing about this band is that uh, the one guy, Chichester, went on to form Howling Maggie, if people may not may or may not know. They've also worked with Afghan Wigs, which is another Cincinnati group, and uh, also founding member of the Twilight Singers. And uh, the other member of the group had gone on to manage tours for artists such as Alanis Morissette, Indigo Girls, Goo Goo Dolls, Avril Lavigne, and somebody called Panic at the Disco. I have no idea who that is. Oh, God, they had a one-hit wonder, Aaron? I think. Oh, I thought oh, they were like well huge in the huge huge Panic at the Disco. They like won uh, Grammys and who okay, hasn't everybody. won a Grammy? I've never won a Grammy. I haven't won one yet. Hillary Clinton won it for best spoken word. <laughs> okay, Panic at the Disco won for best album. That's better than best spoken word. I'll go I want to win for best spoken word. Well, do it. I can't. My speech impediment won't let me. <laughs> <laughs> but anyways, yeah, so that's a band you should go listen to. Uh, some of my favorites uh, EP is from uh, Something New, Old, and Borrowed, where they actually played at the Ohio State Fair. They got some live tunes in which they're being heckled from the audience, and they actually covered some Zeppelin. It's pretty funny. It's good stuff. And then, of course, Spin the World, Midnight Roses, are more popular ones that people may know. Okay. Royal Crescent Mob, otherwise known as RC Mob. You said they're still together? No. Oh, okay. Uh, my number five is, uh, yeah, uh, the White Buffalo in the band The Forest Rangers. Anything? Nope. They did a lot of songs for Sons of Anarchy. Uh, uh, the final episode, okay. where, uh, right. the I final like scene is uh, Jax, you know, going off into the distance on the highway. Uh, that is that song, Come uh, Join the Murder. Uh, he also did House of the Rising Sun on Sons of Anarchy. He's done a couple other ones. So, uh, again, I'm sorry, but I, you know, I don't know that much about music, but I do love his music on the on Sons of Anarchy. So I will go with the White Buffalo and the band, the Forest Rangers. So I'm going with that. Jeff? Uh, let's see. My number five, it's a, an older one from the late 80s, early 90s, a band that, you know, I don't know if I've ever actually heard on the radio. Uh, somebody I worked with uh, you know, said, oh, this band's kind of cool. You know, I heard him listen. I said, I like that. And so he kind of turned me on to it. And I kind of was thinking, other people got to be listening to this band, but apparently they weren't. And, you know, they mid-90s, I think they broke up. But it was the Mighty Lemon Drops. No way! That's on my honorable mention! Really? Yes! The Mighty Lemon Drops. So Blake listens to them. Yes! I do love Lemonheads. 
No. Not Lemonhead. Oh, no. my bad. <laughs> Completely different band. No. But uh, the Mighty Lemon Drops, they, they were one, they had about five or six albums or so in that time period. Yes. 1988, I believe, is their uh, first hit. That sounds yeah, the first, about right. uh, first album came out. Mm-hmm. And so you hear other bands, you know, I, I want to say similar to something like XTC, but I always thought better. And XTC gave me got a bunch of, you know, notoriety and whatnot. And I'm like, but this is a better band. Why aren't more people listening to the Mighty Lemon Drops? Yes, I, I at the World Without End. World Without End, 1988, great. I listened to that back when it was on cassette tape. Yep. I actually wore that cassette tape out. The, the first hit song, of course, was called Inside Out, which is really good. Uh, we're going to do something different here. Okay. Jordan, one of our fans, did such a great job with an email. He sent us an email, the History of Bad Ideas, History of Bad Ideas at gmail.com. He did a lot of research, and he said he loves this topic. He did. So we're going to have him join the roundtable by email. So what is, what is Jordan's number five? Jordan's number five, he says, Amanda Palmer, uh, genre rock. Her album, Theater is Evil, is brilliant from start to finish. Her album, Evelyn, Evelyn, is one of the most impressive things I've ever heard put to audio. It's not a traditional album, but captivatingly bizarre modern fairy tale put to incredible, catchy, and beautiful melodies. Okay. That is what Jordan has to say. His number five, Amanda Palmer. What's his number four? His number four is Patty Griffin, genre country. Uh, This woman has a voice and a collection of masterpieces that rival any musician of any genre. (laughs) And Henry, did I say Henry? Yes. Any genre. I think you were trying to think of Enya. Oh. Is that on your list, Enya? I, everyone should be on your list. Everyone should know hey, Enya by hey, now. I got yeah. some taste. Not much. Uh, words can't describe how powerful her songs are. Listen to Top of the World, Ohio, Making Pies, Don't Let Me Die in Florida, Old or Wild Old Dog, Get Ready Marie, and Driving. Okay. So his number four, Patty Griffin. He said he would like us to listen to some of these if we ever get a chance. I, so. I listened to a couple of them earlier. Uh, Patty Griffin was not one I listened to because I don't like country. I, t- I tend to be turned off of country, but I'll, I will give it a listen <clears throat> because hey, every once in a while something good comes in genres you may not like. Okay. Uh, what's your number four, Jeff? Uh, my number four is a. Enya. Is <laughs> Enya? Hey. Kenny G's next. No. <laughs> no, Kenny G would never be on my list. Um, it is an Australian uh, comedy rock band, The Axis of Awesome. Okay. I thought you were going to say The uh, Condors or whatever the hell that. Flying, Flying Condors? Condors? Yeah. No. No? No. But uh, I'll, I'll read how they uh, promote themselves here. Uh, the Axis of Awesome is, a, is an award-winning comedy rock band with over 100 million hits on YouTube. Their hashtag four-chord song is one of the highest-rated comedy v- YouTube videos ever. You've probably seen it. It's great. Jordan no. Lee and Benny have toured all over and performed sellout shows to live audiences in the U.S., U.K., and Europe, released six albums, and regularly appear on television, radio, and blog for the HuffPo. Interesting. So maybe I, this is why I probably should be listening to. It's one that I like. I stumbled across them. I don't know if a uh, link to one of their 100 million YouTube uh, videos. Uh, I stumbled across the link and enjoyed it and watched a bunch of their YouTube videos and said, more people need to know about this band. So this is the topic that I get to talk about them from. Number four for me. It's a show that my wife and I enjoy. Shut up, Jeff. It's so, another Shark Tank group from a TV show that you watch. America's Got Talent. Oh my God! Shut up! Shut up, all of you! Uh, <sighs> stewing, <laughs> stewing. I just see the uh. air come out of both of you at the same time. Beach Avenue, and uh, got a couple other songs from iTunes. They were enjoyable. They're not poppy. Calm down, people. So they were on the show last year, and I got hooked on some of their songs. And they they did. Better or worse, uh, they did not do any tr- uh, covers. 
Uh, and they actually got to the semifinals, I think, last year by doing all 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 original songs. Which, hey, I'll give them credit. At least they're doing original songs. So I enjoy them. My wife enjoys them. So we did buy, I think, one of the album of them and then a couple other songs. So Beach Avenue. So there you go. There's my thing. All right. All Fuck right. you all about America. Uh, you know, you, you said they're original, so I'll give them that. See? There you go. They run America's Got Talent, but that's okay. I, I think guess next they're talented. Year, I think next year we should do the America's Got Talent just as a podcasting thing. We'll just come out and do we'll 90 come... seconds of podcasting. <laughs> I think there you go. Would that work? Yeah. Yeah. Probably not. not. No. <laughs> uh. <sighs> my number yes. four? All right. My number four is a uh, an alternative rock slash uh, folk rock band from Knoxville, Tennessee. Green Day? No. Oh. Called, uh, called the Judy Bats. Okay. They, um, their initial album was Native Son from 1991. Uh, one of my favorite CDs ever, Down in the Shacks Where the Satellite Dishes Grow, was in 1992. With some of my favorite songs on there that uh, really touched really well. My, like One of my favorite... I like the lyrics that the Judy Bats do. But uh, the favorite song off of there is Saturday, which is really a really cool song that I related to because that's when I got to live in Spain and he's talking about... See, he mentioned Spain on the thing a couple of times. And then, and you know, it's, it's got a song on there called Margot Known as Missy that has probably one of the best opening lyrics that I find in uh, music. And it's uh, it starts out with, Her beautiful ass was lingering over a table of hors d'oeuvres. Interesting. <laughs> and I thought, you know, that's a really great lyric to come up with and write stuff. But uh, over the years, they're, the group, basically has changed over the number of years and I think they quit recording it together in 2000 of what remained of the group but uh, no the Judy Judy Bats Knoxville okay. Tennessee not to be confused with Judy Bloom not to be confused okay. with Judy okay. Bloom no she can rock that's correct she could uh, what's your number three my number three is actually a uh, solo artist that made a band John Bon Jovi no <laughs> That he would change up his uh, band members based upon the album and based upon the style that he was going through with. And uh, the, the name of the uh, artist is uh, Matt Johnson, and he is in the band The The. Okay, I heard of The The. You've heard of The The. I've, Good. I've then heard then The The. You've heard of yeah, you've heard The The. So it's, uh, he's, an English, he's an English fellow, and he's put out uh, tons of good... Albums. Some of them are themed, and some of them doing a, a lot with uh, reflecting a lot with his basically what's go, what was going on with his life at the time. Uh, some of his early stuff is kind of hokey '80s, naturally, but then he gets uh, really good uh, in the early and the mid '90s. He's had uh, artists as part of his band uh, with him, uh, including like Johnny Marr, for example, who's from the Smiths. He's had uh, the guy from Julian Cope. Guys from uh, Iggy Pop, Wire Train, David Bowie. I've heard of Iggy Pop and David Bowie. Yeah, uh, he's even had contributors like David Johansson from the New York Dolls. Otherwise and, known as Buster Poindexter. Yeah, oh. Buster, uh, yeah, exactly. Hot, so, hot, hot. Yes. Oh, 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 I got something. <laughs> there you go. You, you did. You got something. So uh, early 80s stuff, Soul Mining, and in fact is really good. Then it gets really deeper with Mind Bomb and Dusk. And then he did a... Uh, uh, a honky tonk covers of Hanky Pank called Hanky Panky, and uh, just a really good talented guy all around. The the. Okay. Uh, that was your number three. That was my number three. My number three is a newer band or a band that I just kind of got uh, hooked on recently. They're from Iceland. Anybody know where I'm going with this? The uh, Sugar Cubes? No. Of uh, Monsters and Men. Okay, I agree that there's one that everyone should be listening to, but I would have assumed everyone already was listening to I haven't. To them. I'm so <laughs> out of the music loop. I'm sorry my list sucks. <laughs> I like them a lot. So. I'll agree with it. Okay. I, I, I love I Monsters and Men. I got hooked on a couple of their songs. I so. thought of putting them on my list, except for the fact that I thought they were already too Can well Can we just known. get props on we're on the same? Yeah, yeah, Jeff. Same Look page. Same yeah. page. Monsters and Men? No. Oh. No. Also, the All reason right. I got hooked on is... Uh, the what tri- TV show are they from? Shut up. <laughs> The funny thing is I got hooked on them because of the trailer. <laughs> the trailer. Oh. For the good dinosaur, the new Pixar movie. Oh, okay. Geez. And then I went off from there. So, uh, yeah. So, Monsters of Men, I'm sure everybody else has listened to them. Well, guess what? I just started. 
So there's my number three. Jeff, what's your number three? Okay. Hey, fuck you all. My number three is a very little known uh, a band out of uh, somewhere in California, I think. Sticks? No. Oh. <laughs> Uh, pretty much, I've only seen stumbled across them online and really liked what I saw. And you know, whenever they put out new stuff or whatever, I suppose I get it through Facebook or whatnot. And it's like, oh, a new video from them. So you got a lot of hand like movements it. over there, kind of distracting me. <laughs> I, I learned it from Dan Zisco. Oh, okay. <laughs> but uh, the band is it's only a story. Okay. Um, I don't really have a lot to say. I just think that I liked everything I heat seen and heard from them and hope that they get big and other people enjoy them what's your what's uh Uh, jordan's number three jordan's number three let me pull up jordan's list here uh jordan's number three is the agonist genre metal i am a huge metal fan but i realize not everyone gets it so i rarely recommend metal bands to people except for the agonist in my opinion, each member of this band is the best in their craft at what they do. This band has always been impressive, but with their new lead singer, Vicky Sarkis, they are fully realized, and the albums they've made together, I have Providence, is the first from the agonist I can honestly say is gold from beginning to end! Exclamation point. If you listen to these songs, and I hope you do, you may want to watch the lyrics videos for them on YouTube as the lyrics aren't all easy to understand until you know what she's saying. Then these are already amazing songs that take on a whole new life. Listen to Dance Macabre, Faceless Messenger, Perpetual Notion, Architects Hallucinate, and Follow the Crossed Line. Uh... This is one of the bands I listened to some of the stuff that Jordan uh, suggested, and I was enjoying it until they got screamy. Oh yeah, and that's that. Yeah, I'm a huge metal fan, but I hated when people started screaming instead of singing. <laughs> yeah, uh, yeah. So I was never a fan <laughs> of Slayer or. Uh, Pantera because they were too screamy. I, I don't disagree with you on that part. But uh, they were good know, up until that. I, I, I was enjoying it. You know, she was singing night, and then she got into the scream part, and I went, "Oh!" But uh, I'll give them another chance or two and see how, how I like it. Uh, that was All number. Right. That was his three. Jordan's number three. What's his two? No, what's Jordan's two? number two. Wrap it around. Regina Specter, genre pop. Regina I actually Specter. Ha- I have yeah. heard of her. Okay. I couldn't tell you what she sings. I'm sure if you played it, I would know. But I have heard of her. Look at that. Oh, yeah, right. bitches. Man, right. something says, you've got on me, man. Yeah. You're one up. It's hard to place someone as unique. She must have been on The Voice. <laughs> <laughs> Jordan says, it's, it's hard to place someone as unique and as diverse as Regina into a genre. She plays all her own instruments and writes all her own songs. Mm-hmm. So Blake's getting a boner there. All right, there you go. Blake boner. And all the songs she writes are simply masterpieces. She's my favorite musician of all time. She's just brilliant if you appreciate music at all. To fall down this rabbit hole is to fall in love. Listen to Back of a Truck, Buildings, Braille, Blue... It says Blue Lups. I don't know if it's supposed to be Lips. I don't know what a Lup is, but maybe she wrote a song called Blue Lups. Maybe Blue Lupus. It's L-U-P-S is what he typed. Okay. And I don't know if it's just a mistype or if that's actually the name of the okay. song. Forgive me if I'm wrong. Uh, How, Chemo Limo, Laughing With, All the Rowboats, Carbon Monoxide, That Time. Oh, that's French. Après moi. Oh. Open me up. <laughs> Dance <laughs> Anthem of the 80s. Oh, I might want to listen to that. That sounds good. And Ode to Divorce. Uh, apparently he really likes her because that's like a greatest hits uh, collection. I think he just told us to listen to. Or uh, I feel Jordan has done more work on this than we have combined. I'm sure he has. And um, he's making us look really bad. <laughs> <laughs> yep, I like this guy. Yep, have a yep. good day. Moving yep. on. Yep, uh, I, I stumbled across this guy once. I liked it. Yeah. <laughs> that's that's my go. list. What's your number two, Jeff? What is your number two? Uh, my number two is the band uh, Walk Off the Earth. Okay. 
Uh, they are probably most known for being the five-piece band that played uh, one guitar on their cover of Gautier's uh, Someone That I Used to Know. Someone that I used have you, to have you? know. Oh, okay. Well, yeah. Now I know. Thanks, boy. Yeah, that was right. nice. <laughs> And the, the, they that did song's a co- annoying. They did a co- <laughs> I like the song, and I like their version even better. But they are five people in the band, and they have one guitar, and they're all playing different parts of the guitar, and it's pretty impressive. And then, so you when know, they're like recording the song, they like play like a refrain or whatever, and then they gotta hand the guitar off. No. Oh, you need. To, I'll post the video. Parts of the guitar. So somebody's got strings. Somebody's got the. Well, one person is playing like. Maybe the top three strings. Another person's playing the bottom three oh strings. My. Another person. Is this a huge guitar, like super long guitar? It, nope, it's a regular uh, acoustic close, guitar. Close. That sounds the, a little. The, the drummer is like me. pounding on the shell of the guitar. Oh, I'm the sure drums. he is. He's pounding yes. on it. And the one guy plays the parts of the strings above the, uh, the above the neck. Above the neck. Below and, the neck. So below the, the balls neck. or above, above the neck? and below the neck. Above the neck. He plays the plinky part. All right, this sounds more like. But porn, yeah. <laughs> no, but anyway, no, that's no, that's what they're. Well, it actually sounds like an interesting concept. And, and they play other music than that. That's just where they first got. How how tight do they got to be to squeeze in on one it's guitar? It's a video. I'll show you, you the video. Five people, five people playing one guitar. Yes, I'll show you the video. Sounds post like on Facebook. Down. Yeah, post it on the Facebook page. I'll, I'll watch post it, it on the Facebook page. Um, but then I I know they had a, a minor hit song come out about. A year or two ago, I think it was uh, Red Hands, and it was I really liked it, and I thought, oh man, they're going to make it big, and then the song kind of didn't go anywhere. But I think more people should be listening to Walk Off the Earth. Okay, uh, my number two, <laughs> Wank Off the Earth. <laughs> <laughs> no, no, not uh, that five one. Of them to get, oh, no, never mind. <laughs> Is a uh, tie. I saw our both her hands on the guitar at the same time. Sure. <laughs> sure. On the neck. Happy hands. <laughs> Cupping. All right, good. Uh, number two is Peg Bundy, Katie Seagal. And again, from Sons of Anarchy. Have you guys ever heard her sing? Oh, I thought you were talking about Married with Children. No, she's actually a hell of a singer. Uh, Katie Seagal. Yes, she is, actually. Yeah. She has, she's a very good vocalist. Her Bird on a Wire is amazing. I have heard it, yes. Uh, so I'm going Katie Seagal, plus Sons of Anarchy. She sang the, that's the uh, theme song, isn't it? Or no? No, 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 no. Bird on a Wire was uh, when Clay died, I think. I think it's when. But they played her. She did music it. in it with her singing. Yes, yes, that yes. Was it. She yes. sings a lot in it, uh, and she sang a lot of songs in it. So I got a couple of them on my phone uh, from Katie Segal. So I'm doing that. And my tie is with is uh, Bleachers. Anybody know who Bleachers is? Let me guess. They were in a television no. show. No. Uh-huh. No. American indie pop act based in New York City, formed by Jack Antonoff from the band <laughs> Steel Train and Fun. Uh, ah, yeah, motherfuckers, now I got gotcha. you. Yeah. You got us? Okay. You got they have one CD out because they have just. Jeff or what? What? <laughs> they have one CD out. Oh, you're pointing at them, but what? Why, 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 does, why do you have Jeff on that? Because we've never heard these people? Well, no, because Jeff somewhat knows fun. Oh, he knows fun. I yeah. somewhat know fun. I think somewhat everybody know somewhat fun. knows fun. Uh, his first, uh, it's very 80s inspired, but um, uh, it's uh, I Want to Get Better is their uh, single, which was I love that song. It's a great uh, running song. If you're running, it's a good song. Running, um, running, good beat, running, running. Good yeah, beat. Yeah. Da, 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 da. Uh, I want to get better. Anyways, uh, and they just came out the CD I this year too. Get better, but it's a good. Song. Shut up, Jet Blake. God, fuck you. <laughs> God, I hate you. This is why we don't do music categories. <laughs> no, I respect that. Oh, fuck you. No, oh, you yeah, don't. I do. <laughs> it may not rock. But I understand. <laughs> I hate you all. But do they rock? They don't rock, but that's okay. I'm leaving. At least it gives you positive reinforcement. What's your happy number? song? Like I want to get better. Shh. Shut up! <laughs> Go number two. <laughs> Fuck you. All right, you know, I'm, I'm glad you had a tie for your number two because no, it wouldn't be a top five without having more than five acts. I've got a tie for my number two. Green Day? Bon no. Movie? No. My tie for number two are, uh, and, and uh, you know, almost kind of like with uh, Hojo B1's uh, female, female singer. I got two female vocalists. Uh, the first one goes, her name is Holly Golightly. 
Not to be confused with Truman Capote's uh, character from Breakfast at Tiffany's. I bet that's where she got her name from. Or no, porn. she's actually named after Holly Golightly. She's a uh, she's her range is everything from uh, alternative rock to um, rhythm and blues to garage rock. She's been she's done things with the White Stripes and. Um, uh, Rocket from the Crypt and all that kind of fun stuff. I know White Stripes. She's got a, a range that you would like, I think, especially. Really? After exactly. you just mocked me relentlessly for the last 20 minutes about music? Uh, she plays her own guitar. <laughs> oh. Jeff, she doesn't have the help. Nobody's cupping. Of four weirdos <laughs> grabbing onto it. While <laughs> right, oh my God. Yeah, yeah. She's but not being groped. That makes it more impressive when you're able to play your own guitar with four weirdos groping it. That makes it a little kinky, is what I'm thinking. Yeah. And kinky and impressive. Yes. But uh, surprisingly, she has been around for a long time, has done a lot of stuff. My favorite is her uh, 2005, my uh, first Holly Go Lightly album, is what it's called. It's not actually her first album, but that's what she called it. Now, Tide, mm-hmm. of course, because I have to do it. Lisa Loeb. No. <laughs> it's uh, Liz Fair. Oh, everyone Liz knows Fair. Liz Fair. I've heard of her. Even I've heard of her. I'm not talking about her top 40 stuff. I'm talking about her <laughs> earlier alternative rock indie well, rock. Still stuff. included. <laughs> you can't just say not that. Yes. <laughs> My number one's Metallica. Now everything they've made. <laughs> yeah, yeah, not, not the stuff that was popular. No, that no, early no, no, stuff no, is no, what no, you no. got. <laughs> and the symphony for stuff. No, <laughs> great, great stuff. Exile and Guy F- Guyville and uh, Whip Smart and White Chocolate Space Egg. And then she got a little top 40-ish with her uh, hit that came off of, I think, was it Liz Fair in the early 2000s? It was called um, Why Can't I or whatever the hell that was. Uh, I didn't even know Liz Fair was creating movies in the early two or movies. Creating music in the early 2000s. Was that your I number just one? Her 90s no, stuff. those are both my number two. Oh, now you're going to number one. Okay. Yes. What's your number yes. one? Oh, my Sorry. number one. My number one is uh, Throwing Muses. Oh, yeah. Okay. I would expect Jeff to know probably throwing muses. What am I? <laughs> you are well. They weren't on The Voice. <laughs> they weren't on America's Got Talent. <laughs> and I'm out. And, and, and I don't think they used them. Sons of Anarchy. They on Sons of Anarchy. <laughs> and uh, they uh, they weren't on uh, Survivor. So <laughs> no, it's uh, going back. Uh, uh, Kristen Hirsch, very well known for throwing music, and her half sister Tiny Donnelly, Judge who Hirsch. went on to go uh, form Belly, <laughs> and Belly. also did uh, some stuff uh, with uh, the Breeders, the first album of, of the Breeders. But uh, Kristen Hirsch has been the constant throughout the years of uh, throwing muses, and uh, overall great stuff. I would say House Tornado. Uh, very early in Raw, Hunk Papa's guy had their first, you know, hit, hit Dizzy. And, but uh, I really like the real Ramona, Red Heaven, and University. All those three albums are pretty good. Good stuff. I like when Judge Hirsch was masturbating to Phoebe, Phoebe Cates. Remember that? Yes, <laughs> I do remember that. Judge Reinhold? Yes, that was yeah, what Blake said. Oh, he was oh, 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 okay. I still remember that. I don't remember much about our podcast, but I remember that. That's right. Stuff for Pam Morris to look forward yes. to. Uh, number one for me, I know everybody's going to be like, oh, everybody knows I'm Well, fuck you, I like them. Everybody knows them, though. Shine Down. Oh, okay. Love Shine Down. Love Shine Down. Who's that? Shut up. I do not know them. I'm not serious. I do not know them. I know of them, but I shine down. Think. Yeah, I'll play it at the break because of copyright. But uh, yes, they are awesome. So go listen to them. Uh, I, let's see here. I got a couple of their albums actually. Uh, they did Us and Them, uh, Second Chance, Unity, Miracle. Any of these songs? Well, fuck you, Blake. Anyways, I'll play them for you. They sound like uh, they're hard rock. Okay, a little harder rock. Sure. So. Anyway, so... They rock. They do. That's my number one. I don't care. Fuck you all. I'm not saying anything bad say about Shine Down. Low on edge now. <laughs> Little on edge. They were never on The Voice. <laughs> <laughs> okay. Uh, what's your number but one? But were they in Sons of Anarchy? No, fuck you. No, they Never weren't. <laughs> uh, my, my number one is one that you probably should have heard of, but I was just thinking they should have been a lot more popular. Michael Jackson? No. Oh. No. Uh, Blue October? Nope. No, no. See, you should have heard of Blue October. No. Uh, in the, about 2006, they had a, a popular, well, fairly popular song called Hate Me. And then uh, Into the Ocean, I think, got some Hate radio airplay. Me. 
Is that right? That's close. I can't tell. A, <laughs> I can't tell from your style of singing oh, if you're thinking of hate right. me. It's me. No, not she fucking hates me. Hate that. Me. No, that is the song though. It is. <laughs> <laughs> It was on radio. <laughs> it was on radio. Yeah. But, but I mean, I those, those songs like, are just... Hey, a, me! <laughs> those, those songs are just a tip of the iceberg. You know, they got mm-hmm. like six albums out, and they're all great, and everyone should be listening to them more than they have. Okay. But, right. uh, yeah, they uh, hey, had uh, moderate success in the, uh, in the, the 2006 album uh, Foiled. Uh, that had the two songs that I have heard on the radio, but I haven't heard anything hey, else on the radio from them the since. the album Drats? Drats? Yes. Followed by Foiled. Slats. Oh. And then the third album, Again? <laughs> again? <laughs> no, no, it's not Drats Foiled again. Fourth album's Pesky Kids. <laughs> <laughs> Followed by Blue Moister. Blue Oyster. Blue Oyster. Blue Mountain Oysters. <laughs> Did you say Blue Moister? Blue moisture. He said Blue Moister, <laughs> yes. Uh, I've got Jason's impediment now. Yeah. So. But okay. Blue October, one of my favorite bands, and apparently a lot of people don't know who they are yet. Because well, I do. I've heard of Hate Me. Oh, okay. <laughs> she fucking hates me. Hate me. <laughs> she fucking hates me. Who sings it? I can't remember. Uh, Blue October. No, not no. that. <laughs> no, not that one. It's Blue October. She's, uh, yeah, they sing fucking Hate Me. No, that's not Blue October. Hate yeah, Me. <laughs> anyway, we're going on to Jordan's here right, because well, so be, yeah, Jordan Jason guy. throws a fit and then goes ahead and becomes a dick anyway. <laughs> hey, man. Can't believe you got your record put on my list. <laughs> yeah, we're mature. <laughs> All right, well, now let's get some serious right, here. Let's get some serious. Uh, bring Jordan's, some classic culture back. Jordan's number one uh, Jordan. cloud call. Genre cool. rock? With a question mark? Yes. Okay. All right. Again, too unique, too exquisite to fall under a specific genre. There is nothing like Cloud Cult. The beauty of their melodies is unrivaled, and their songs are as original as they are inspiring. This band makes great use of strings and horns and creates an atmosphere from each song that most artists uh, can create in an entire career. If more people listen to Cloud Cult, the world would be a much more civilized place. Listen to the entire Light Chasers album, When Water Comes to Life, Washed Your Car, Breakfast with My Shadow, As Long As You're Happy, May Your Hearts Stay Strong, The Show Starts Now, and Chemicals Collide. Okay. I I think I listened to like one of the songs and it it sounded a little trippy for me, but I'll have to give it more of an in depth listen to. So no, hate me. Anyways, Jordan, thank you. I I I, I can punch you right now. No, you can't. Your raptor arms. You can't reach me. (laughs) Oh, I I want to punch you now. How's that? T Rex arms. Yeah, he calls T Rex arms raptor arms. (laughs) It sounds cooler. T Rex arms just sound stupid. Raptor arms sound cool. Okay. He's the Ricky Waters of podcasting. Uh, <laughs> take All that right. uh, Jordan, thank you for that. Yeah, thanks for your uh, sophistication because we obviously lack it. No, no. We now don't. he also has uh, you know some honorable mentions here too. Go through them. I've got a whole bunch of honorable mentions. Well, uh, Let's go through them quick. Right, go through Jordan's I'll hit first. Jordan's uh, metric genre rock. Okay. Casey Musgraves genre country. Frank Turner genre rock. Gaslight Anthem, genre rock. Actually, I think I heard of them. Atmosphere, genre rap. I think I have heard of Gaslight Atmosphere. Oh, you I haven't heard. No, Gaslight mm-hmm. Anthem. Atmosphere was a different band. Oh, never mind then. I haven't <laughs> uh, Blake, okay. what's your honorable? Well, I was trying to think of bands that people might not have heard, but uh, have you, you've heard Typo Negative? Mm-hmm. Oh, I've seen Typo Negative in concert twice. Then you rock. Because <laughs> they opened for Queens, right? You rock. All right. Uh, Love Battery. They had like know. a one album that came it's out in the early, early 90s. So those at The Hustler, right? No, no, no. <laughs> it, it's a good, they're a good, they're a good band. Love Battery. Uh, My Life with the Thrill Kill Cult. Nope. They had, they had one song, Hit It Big, but they've got some great you know stuff before that and in the past years. Really cool. All right, how about uh, Mary's Danish? 
No. no. I goes with the little All battery. Right. That's <laughs> well, they're they're, they're kind of like an alt rock slash country. It was pretty pretty good mix. Uh, Chicago's one album. Chicago. Material, yeah, no, Chicago's own <laughs> material issue. No. How about Cincinnati's Jake Speed and the Freddies? I don't even know. No. How about MC Nine Hundred Foot Jesus? I've heard of I've MC heard of Hammer. Hammer. I've only had a brain. He's, he's not a. Uh, he's a scarecrow. No. I was say, it's not a religious guy. He's kind of more like, yeah. like a jazz fusion rap kind of guy. Pretty cool. Uh, Too Much Joy. Nope. Nope. They had a, a song called uh, Long Haired Guys from England, which is pretty funny. No? All right. <laughs> uh, more recently, the Asteroids Galaxy Tour. Nope. No? Nope. Played Asteroids. From Sweden. Yeah, pretty good. Uh, oh, from sweet. England, uh, Kasabian. I think I have heard of that. You may have heard of uh, Kasabian. Yeah. Sir? I think you're just saying it just so we don't keep saying no. <laughs> no, that's no, hey, I'm, I'm, I'm not saying I could tell you a song they did or whatnot. But I got another one, like Cincinnati. It's, one. it's called uh, "Jesus Crush My Balls." Jesus nope. crush my balls. <laughs> Is that what you just said? <laughs> you said Jason scratch my balls. <laughs> oh, are you? I don't know. Are you playing the guitar? <laughs> no, not for Jason. Never mind. He <laughs> <laughs> needs all five people to play. <laughs> My guitar. How big are your balls? <laughs> <laughs> it takes five people. <laughs> oh boy! <laughs> well, we did get some good ones from the fans. Uh, get some real ones. All right. Yeah. Uh, let's see here. Hold on. I'm getting the fans going here. Okay. Uh, Neil at uh, Dark Angels Pre Feet. Uh, Shine Down. See? Yeah. Breaking Benjamin. I've heard of them. Black Veil Br- Brides, Three Days Grace. Everyone's heard of them. Chevelle, Crossfade, 6 a.m., Evans Blue, and Hailstorm. I've heard of Hailstorm. I've yeah. heard of Chevelle. Hailstorm's um, good. Hailstorm was one that I might have put on my list, but I thought they were already too Some popular. of his more popular ones, but he still thinks people should listen to. Incubus, Avenged Sevenfold. Avenged Sevenfold is excellent. Red, uh, Rodrigo y-, y. Gabriella. I forgot about this band. I have a seat, uh, their, one of their albums, Seven Dust. <laughs> I've heard it's, yeah, Seven I'm, Dust. I'm laughing at your uh, previous pronunciation. Rodrigo Y. Gabriela? I, I think it's Spanish, so the Y is pronounced E, which is Spanish for and. Rodrigo y Gabriela. <laughs> <laughs> Hate me. <laughs> okay, go ahead. Seven Dust? <laughs> I hate you. <laughs> Smile, empty soul. That's what you have. You have an empty soul over there. I probably do. Stone sour. Them crooked vultures. I like them crooked vultures. And uh, uh, let's see. Theory of a dead man. I've heard theory yep. of a dead man. Trapped and trust company. Uh, he did have another list. Uh, you sh- uh, let's see. Number five, Rishi Sambora. Four, <laughs> four, John Bon Jovi. Oh my God. Three, Bon Jovi. Uh, two Bon Jovi and number one Bon Jovi and I agree Uh, I'm gonna have to like put this pen through my ear Uh, let's see here Uh, Brian H at Brian underscore Hackney had 21 pilots Uh, Walk the Moon which is uh, well yeah they're a local band that has that big hit song right now Uh, Dance With Me yeah Shut Up and Dance Yeah. Five Finger Death Punch I've heard of them oh you better they were just in concert a week ago I've heard of Five Finger but (laughs) <laughs> that was with a guitar. Uh, Grace Potter, uh, Gary Clark Jr., and Leon Bridges. So oh. that's another one. Okay. Uh, let's see here. Uh, he Graphic Novice asked if Dolly Parton was ever in a band. Uh, I don't think she was, so you she, can't use her. Well, well she did. Right. She she did that trio album. Well, she's got that one song with Has Andrew Harrison, song Linda Ronstadt. Working nine to five, pour myself a cup of ambition. I'm working nine to five. Thanks, Blake. You're you, welcome. You, you, I had to bring it up. You did not have oh, to. Oh, you yeah, played the guitar. Yeah. You're bringing it up, That's baby. Right. Uh, Randall Holt at RJ Holt 666. Uh, let's see <clears> here. Um, nope, he didn't have it. He just said, Slip where you went wet. A tribute show to Bon Jovi is coming to society. <laughs> <laughs> what do these people keep bringing up Bon Jovi for? <laughs> I hate Oh, here he goes. This is top five. Wrathchild America. I'm... Wrathchild. Now that's the name of an Iron Maiden song, so I'm assuming they're probably a cover of yeah. the version of Iron Maiden. Okay. I Four. could be wrong. If I'm wrong, Randy will tell us. Four. Family Force. Five. Uh, three. Iced Earth. I don't Iced know, Earth but that sounds like good. a cool movie. No. Iced I- Earth. Iced Earth is a good band. Again, I thought they were probably too 
well known I thought, for me to uh, put on this. Family but... Force Five was like a uh, Fox like Force that, Five. That's what, uh, yeah, that <laughs> Fox Fox Force Five. Uma Thurman. Uh, Uma Thurman. Oh God, <laughs> TV pilot. Catch up. Yeah. Uh, number two. <laughs> this is what pl- describes Jeff, the Loveless. So. So I'm now soulless and loveless. Yes. Wow. Me. And number one, the Big Bad. So there you go. All right. Uh, so there you go. Uh, that's our uh, fans, I think. I don't think we got any more. If we do, I'll get to it next time. Uh, but yeah, so there's uh, your top five bands you should be listening to. Thanks again to Jordan. <laughs> your top 87 bands yes. you should be listening <laughs> top to. Top 87. <laughs> uh, also, num- uh, don't forget to give us a review on iTunes and let us know. And you can be in for the $25 gift card drawing. And look at us on nerdly.co.uk. And if you actually paid to go see the visit... Yes. Let us know. You can write a review for us. Yes, please. Even write if one. you don't pay to go see it, just let us. If you write a review, we'll put it up. And <laughs> I uh, didn't see it, but I heard <laughs> that it sucks. <laughs> you know, I mean, if you snuck oh, in. That's it. Uh, no, bad idea number three fifty nine. Not watching the He Man. Not watching He Man, aka Masters of the Universe, the nineteen eighty nine film on Netflix. It came to Netflix this month. Yeah, and it's a bad idea to not watch it. Yeah, you gotta watch it. Oh, Courtney okay. Cox is in it. Frank Langella chewing scenery. Yes, he chewed scenery like a deer. Um, <laughs> nop, 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 nop. Hey, hey, hey me. <laughs> she fucking hates me. <laughs> hey, me. Uh, Roger says goodbye. 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 Hey, me. From Walking Dead to Talking Heads, from comic books to TV sets, there's a history not so bad, there's the history. It's the history of bad, so bad. The history of bad, it's bad. The history of bad ideas. Oh, yes. You are now leading the world of Musings of a Geek Podcast Network. Stay geeky, my friends.